Hey guys, Bobby Thompson here with another episode of Jiu Jitsu and Coffee. Today my guests are Nicole Bodden and Jeff Gates, and hopefully we'll be being joined later with by uh, Pedro Pajares. So um, our, our guest is a little late, it's supposed to be Pedro, but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and jump into a couple subjects. Some of you guys may not know um, uh, Jeff Gates. Jeff's, has been, Jeff's been training with me for... How long do you think you've been training, Jeff? A year next month. Yeah, already a year. Did you did you train jujitsu somewhere else before you trained? No. And um, but you trained quite a few other martial arts. I trained uh, taekwondo um, in high school for about seven years, and then about three years independently, just here and there. Um, <clears throat> Aikido for about two and a half years, and then I ended up here. Uh, Where did you train Aikido at? Uh, I started training at a place called Wave Man on East Boulevard, but they're closed now. It was a really small, really small dojo. Uh, and it was just a married couple that really they just wanted a place to practice. Yeah. So they opened the studio. Um, then they ended up going under, I want to say two years ago? Then I, no, three years ago. Then I started training over on the west side off of Phillips at... Uh, the Aikido Center of Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've been there a few times. The yeah. yeah, I've never, I've never, I've met those guys, but uh, one of my buddies used to run his jujitsu school out of there. Um, okay. They used to, yeah, they used to have a jujitsu program that ran out of there. So I'd been there and cross trained yeah, with them. There's, I think there's two guys over there that I know of, or at least one that does jujitsu as well. So he trains like two days a week in each. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> man, so. <sighs> What's been going on in the world of jiu-jitsu? Did you see the Husamar Paul Harris versus Craig Jones match? I have not. No, did you see Husamar, how he came out for that match? Did you see the, the, no. the photos of him? No? No. Man, he's freaking jacked, huge, really? massive. Did you see the photos? A little bit. I I know that uh, Craig Jones won, but... Yeah. Because it was, like, posted everywhere on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, well, he did it. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, that's really impressive. <laughs> so glad glad uh, we had Craig Craig here for a seminar. He did a he did an awesome job. Was glad he uh, he pulled that out. I'm sure. That was a really good seminar too. It was all you know based on the legs and stuff, but I found it really helpful. So. Yeah. Well, it's cool is that he he rolls with everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Like that yeah. was that was super yeah. cool. Is that he he rolled with everyone in the school as long as they wanted to roll and test themselves against him and. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't get it. It's kind of frustrating because yeah, I, had to, I had to take off and he just stayed yeah. at home. Well, because there's there were so many people that yeah. wanted to roll with him. I'm like, I, I mean, I'd be tired after rolling with all those people. I'm just gonna, you know, just get go home and <laughs> rest myself. But he's like Pedro. Yeah. Pedro, I wish Pedro would have been here. That would have been a phenomenal match, yeah. man. That, that that Pedro pressure. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, both of those guys are professional athletes, and, and Pedro's ranked in the top 100 in the world in, in black belts and IBJJF. Yeah. But uh, Craig triangled me, which is frustrating because I'm a triangle ah. guy, right? Like, <laughs> like. Uh, I think you told me about that. You were kind of upset. Yeah, yeah, not upset, well, but, you know, upset, like, man, disappointed, the, disappointed right? Yeah, the, disappointed. That, that, that I got, you know, triangle's been my move for. Yeah. God, 16 years now, and I thought I knew it inside, and you know I haven't been triangled in so long, and yeah, he triangled me. But um, Car uh, Carlson Gracie Jr. is going to be in Jacksonville um, Monday oh, wow. at 7 p.m. He's going to be at Luis's. Yeah. Oh. At Luis's Academy. Wow. I didn't. Know that. Uh, yep. Yeah. Fifty dollars. I'll probably I'll make an appearance out there. I'm sure. Um. We're not gonna have class. Are we? No class. No. So let's see. I'm sure if Jason was here, we could really go on and on about some jujitsu stuff. But since we got Jeff here, and I know Jeff is uh, into a few conspiracies, let's go ahead and switch gears. Um, we'll get into the coffee portion. The coffee portion is synonymous with uh, conspiracies and uh, and esoteric knowledge and teachings. So. Um, you turned me on to 
uh, well, I don't know if you turned me on intentionally to Emmanuel Velikovsky. I don't know if you that, but you you turned me on to the theory that our um, you know planet gets reset, civilization oh, yeah. gets reset every yeah. you know every so often. Yeah. And I I went out and started searching for that, and uh, came up with a guy by the name of um, Emmanuel Velikovsky. And, okay. and he wrote a book in, uh, 19, he released it in 1950. It was called When Worlds Collide. And his theory was that, yeah. um, and, and it's more than a theory, like he has evidence, but the theory is that we get wiped out every so often, right? And his, his biggest evidence is the moon. And uh, you, could, you could see um, that there's not, a, uh, there's not any portion of the moon that's untouched by, uh, you know, asteroids or comets. It's just the, yeah. whole, the whole thing is just pockmarks. Which is evidence that, yeah. you know, it's been hit over. And yeah, over and and over. it can't hit without us. Get, get, it's smaller than us, right? Like if it's getting hit, and then the really scary part is, there's craters that are 600 miles across, and we talk about like a 500 foot meteor, meteor, and what that or asteroid, what that would do to us, right? Um, but imagine a 600 mile across, you know, asteroid coming at 20,000 miles an hour or whatever that would devastate the planet that's the reset button yeah that's sure. the reset button right there and and <clears throat> there's plenty of them on the moon so that that you know it happens right yeah and uh what's really interesting is how little notice we would get for something like that i've seen in the past where we didn't know an asteroid was coming at us until it was like a, like two days out I want to say I'm going off of memory and I got terrible memory, but I want to say it was like, you know, it was a matter of days. Like yeah. they're like, because man, this thing's tiny, not you know, plan. it's not a, it's not a, you know, it's out there in the darkness of space. It's dark itself. It's a, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not a, um, a star or anything. And it's moving at, tw you know, 20, 30,000 months. You know, mm -hmm. I, th I think they say these things can go, f I don't know the range, but I think I've seen anywhere from 20 to 60,000 miles an hour. Wow. And yeah, so it's like all of a sudden, you know, imagine tomorrow they could go, yeah. hey guys, Tuesday tomorrow we're going to, Thursday's it. Got two yeah, days. that's it. And that's, that's mind numbing to me, right? Great. I need to start a college and <laughs> thanks. <to> die. thanks. <laughs> you know. Well, the crazy thing is like, there's so many ways. Did, did some, they ever have a number? Because I've heard it's usually 15 to 17,000. Years. I don't, I mean, I don't know if he averaged it or anything, but um, I would think that's totally random. Like, just my thoughts on it. I would think it. so, too. Um, I would think that, you know, th there could be a 100,000 year period, and then there could be a 20,000 or even a 100 year period. You know, like, you know, you could, you could, uh, You know, I, I would think with, with, with what's zipping through space, and apparently these are just rogue asteroids, just like on just zipping through the cosmos uh, and the, on their own path, no telling where they came from. But apparently, we also have to worry about things that come from the Kuiper Belt. So um, I don't know a whole lot about that, but um, apparently, we get a lot of debris that comes from the Kuiper Belt, and I, I, um, I guess that's maybe that's. Yeah, well, I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, I don't know if you got the Kuiper Belt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Need to, need to watch another, need to watch a video on that one. Mm -hmm. um, so while we, while we got you on the hot spot, Jeff, since, mm -hmm. since you're here, uh, and we've already been through this with, uh, with Nikki, let's talk about some of these, some of this conspiracy stuff. I like, when I get people on, I like to talk about, I like to talk about, you know, I like to put them to the woke meter and kind of see how, how woke they are. Oh my God. You so, post on you need another coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so but the first question I always ask is, uh, on a scale of one to 10, how woke are you? I'm, I've never, I've watched all your podcasts so far and watched you do the woke thing with everybody. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Scale from one to 10. Right, yeah. How woke do you rate yourself? Never even thought about rating. I guess six, seven. Maybe. Six. So you're you're pretty you're into you're into researching alternative theories. Like you, you, I mean, basically you enjoy that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you're you're fairly woke then. You know, like. Yes. Um, That's better than me. But let's see how let's <laughs> let's see how. You got this. Um, man, my mom. I love her to death. Um, oh. You know, this is my mom. But this is what she does all day long. Like you know, she's. 
Well, she's on YouTube, you know, researching all this, going down every rabbit hole, you know. Wow. Yeah. She's retired, and that's what she enjoys doing, you know, yeah, so she's... She's got the time for it. That's, it's, for me, it's time restriction. There's a lot of rabbit holes I haven't gone Oh, there. yeah. the time for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, luckily, I got to have an IT job where I work from my desk, <laughs> so I, I get to, I get a, I get enough downtime where, yeah. where a lot of tasks are... Uh, I do watch Dark Legacy, though. Dude, yeah. I mean, that's some... St- that casts some serious doubt. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, let's go ahead and do this. That's one. <laughs> uh, so, do you think do you think a secret cabal controls our government and selects our presidents, or do you think that we have a true democracy where we vote uninfluenced on our presidents, and that once they get to office, they're in control of, of our country? I'm going to go with Jason on this one. It's really not a secret. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think it, I don't know cabal. I guess, but there's definitely some. Back scratching going on at the top. Yeah, I'm into. Uh, we'll we'll try our um, um, our four way split. <laughs> Looks so cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm into that. I'm into the whole cabal thing. I like. There's some people that talk about it. Um, I think first person I heard use that term was a guy by the name of uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, and he runs the Disclosure Project, and. Uh, uh, you know, he's he's really into UFOs yeah. and ex- ETs and whatnot. And, uh, and but also, like, I remember when I first watched, it was it's been, I don't know, years ago. It's probably been six, seven, eight years ago, and maybe longer, when I watched Zeitgeist. Did you ever watch Zeitgeist? Have you ever watched any of those Maybe documentaries? So. Oh, you got to watch Zeitgeist. My God. That's where you start. Like, th- that. that's the video that transforms <laughs> one into a truth. Or, yeah, Zeitgeist. Z-E-I-T. G E I S T Zeitgeist. This is like the this is like um, woke 101, right? Like they, like the, yeah, I mean basically if you're if you're like if you're a truther or you're woke it it, it also <laughs> Perfect it, for me. <laughs> it starts with Zeitgeist. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it does for for anyone, but uh, they get they get into um, you know, they, they talk about the Federal Reserve and educate you like what a, what a fractional reserve banking system is, and um, you know that uh, that the fact that our banking system, our that the Federal Reserve is not federal by it's it's private, it's privately yeah. owned, and they print our money for it, you know, at interest uh, to our government. Um, but they get into some other things, you know, like I didn't know before before going down that rabbit hole. Um, I didn't know about the Bilderberger Group, and I didn't know about the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations, and and like basically there's these two groups that get together and select who our next president is going to be. Like if if you that's my belief system, right? Like I, I believe that, um, I believe that the Bilderberg Group and the Council on Foreign Relations are really who kind of runs the government, right? And there's and, and you'll it, just start with Zeitgeist and it'll take you down that road so and you'll kind of see. Trump just throw a wrench in all of well, it. that's interesting, right? Like, and the here's the crazy thing about it is, you know, <clears throat> Trump happened after everyone became aware of them, right? So you got to wonder is now are, did they form a new secretive group and are they kind of casting doubt on the theory by making it look like they select one and another one gets selected yeah. you know you know like the point okay. of it is it's like now that that they were exposed you you think they would go back and try to cover up their tracks right like oh let's let's meet with one and make it look like we ch- were choosing this one and then the other one wins and it looks like we're not in control you know like there could be there's there's so many ans- different explanations that are that are possible um, but you know, it, it certainly seemed like Trump wasn't my first vote. You know, my yeah. first vote would have been Gary Johnson. Um, I didn't get to vote. It's a long story on that. I tried to. Um, I had a voter registration card, but it was from Kentucky, and I didn't know you had to register for each state. I didn't know. I was registered to vote, but apparently if you move, you have to go register in that state, which is stupid because am I a citizen of the United States or not? Like if I'm registered to vote and have a voter ID card and a valid ID – why can't why can't I vote in any state? But I, I mean, I guess that stops you from going and voting in, voting in multiple states at one time. But well, you can just vote on the internet. yeah, that's how it should be. Honestly, that <laughs> that on. yeah, with today's technology, that's how it should be. Um, 
Okay, so uh, here's the big one. Here's the one that's still, you still see posts on this every day today, right? This is the big split uh, in, in, in our country. You, you, do you think 9-11 was an inside job? Yeah. 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 I do. I'm sold. I don't know how, but... <laughs> I mean, I don't know the I don't details. Know. Right, yeah. I, I mean, they actually... They actually explain it pretty well, like like uh, in in a documentary called Loose Change 9/11. Um, that's a really good one that kind of gets into, you know, like w one of the Bushes, one of the brothers was awarded a contract to yeah. renovate floor by floor, and and he you know this is right before they would close off an entire floor yep, and renovate yep, it. Yep, and then this is right before the controlled demolition, which is what I call it. Like people go, oh yeah, well, you know, there was a fire and my, the thing of it is, is the fire was burning way, way up here. And then you have a structure of steel and steel doesn't collapse, especially that, you know, this steel was designed to hold this weight. There was no more weight, you know, it, and it just, it just disintegrated beneath it. That, that can't, and it didn't, um, you know, even if the floors would have pancaked, they would have pancaked around the steel girders. Like the steel girders, the floor, they, they kind of, you know, the, the, the steel, the concrete floors are kind of attached to them, but they just would have, you know. The building would not fall. It, would, like it couldn't disintegrate like that. You know, I've watched, I've watched um, physicists and scientists talk about you can't displace that kind of, uh, you know, that, that kind of, um, that much, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say matter, but we'll just go with matter. Yeah, you mass. can't displace that mass, right? You yeah, just you can't just dis make it fall straight down. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Yeah, it, buildings don't fall straight down. It's not how structure works. Um, so JFK assassination was an inside job. What are your What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I thought it was an inside job before I watched yeah. Dark Legacy, but after watching Dark Legacy, I'm like, okay. Yeah, I thought that was an amazing documentary. If you haven't seen that. If you if you're watching or listening and you haven't seen Dark Legacy, watch Dark Legacy because there's some really unexplained stuff in there. You, they bust Bush lying, like he, you know, if if you were, they said he was the head of the CIA, which is you know, um, if you were the head of the CIA, and the president of the United States was murdered on your watch, you would know where you were. Yeah. And you saw, I don't know if you saw the point where they asked him one time, "Hey, where were you?" He's like, "Oh, I was here. I know." I know where I was watching 9-11. Two, two different answers or three different answers? Totally? Two or three. But, yeah, every time he changed it. And the reason is, you know, he was there. He was in, I think it was in Dallas. It was Dallas. in Texas. Yeah, he was there. He was in Dallas when it happened. So um, that's a really good. They're from Texas. Yeah. And, and um, so let's move on to the Clintons. What do you, you – are they psychopathic murderers, or is it just a... I'm not sure. I mean, it's entirely possible. Yeah. It's entirely... I don't think they're psychopathic murderers, mm. but it's entirely possible that they've had to get rid of a few... A few now, Nikki, anything you have an opinion on, chime in. You know, we're, we're, we're free talking here, so yeah, we, I, we I haven't put Jeff... Stealing your children and taking them down the basement and murdering them, but I think for... Political reasons, they probably had to get rid of a few journalists. Or I, I'm going to go out there. Maybe to? beyond political. Was it a have to though? Oh yeah, yeah. You get some dirt on the Clintons, and you have to go away. Yeah, I I do. I think I think they're as bad. Like um, I actually do think that they they're like child molesting, child murdering spirit cookers. Could be. I do. I would like argue if, against it. If you watch. Um, there's there's two reasons that I that I believe that. First off, Pizzagate, which Pizzagate. I have. I, I haven't had time to research it. But. Oh my God! If you read some of these emails that they were sending, uh, you know, and, and it's released yeah, on I've WikiLeaks. Heard, I've watched videos about it, stuff, but I haven't had a chance to actually. Holy get shit, into man! It. They're talking about child molesting. They are talking about sixty thousand dollar pizza. Yeah, yeah, you know, and like. You know, you, 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 sixty-year-old people don't have this conversation. You should really try the pepperoni. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know if I'm ready for that. No, you should. You should. You know, well, um, trust me. You'd, you'd like it. We've done it. You know, we've had it. You know, and it's obvious. You know, it's they're obviously not talking about pizza, and they're they're coaxing each other into things. And um, the the leader that they're that they're getting all this from, the the owner of this uh, pizza restaurant, is a 
convicted uh, child molester and trafficker. Like this is the guy they're getting the quote unquote pizza from, right? Like, and um, there was some one lady did a such a good video on YouTube. And she showed all these people that are in. She, she, she broke down all the people that were in these chain of emails. And one, one of these guys, I can't remember, he worked for the Clintons. He was in the White House. And he's given a, he's given a, uh, he's doing some type of interview at his house. And he's got paintings of like children strapped down to tables naked, you know, and like, and he's like, and like one of the reporters or whoever's interviewed him asks about it. And he says, well, that's art. That's this very progressive artist yeah, that's progressive. and uh yeah that's really super progressive you know and he has multiple paintings like this in his in his house right but uh yeah pizzagate that 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 sealed it for me but yeah the clintons um did you ever have you seen the documentary um yeah, yeah. No. the clinton chronicles i'll watch it eventually yeah i'm just strapped for time oh, it's so it, yeah that that's a, i think i'm kind of there too Busy trying to do other things. So. <laughs> yeah, we're limited, obviously, but you know, I've, I have I've, it on my list, though. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um. All right, let's move on. You think we've been to the moon? No. No, I don't think we've left Earth. Yeah. What, what about you, Nikki? You, I, don't you, think, you, I don't think the human race has left Earth. What do you think? same answer i really i really <laughs> i don't think we've been in the moon i mean i think we've I sent, still have to we've sent robots to the moon yeah probably. i wouldn't Successfully. doubt that i would i wouldn't I doubt think a human being has left earth yet yeah i wouldn't doubt um i just know i saw two documentaries like i i was without an opinion until i saw um because i mean you're without a, an opinion if you don't research it but then i saw a funny thing happened on the way to the moon I tried to look for that, but um, on Netflix, and it said it was just conspiracies. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know if it was the same one or not. So no, YouTube like, it. It's on oh, the whole thing's okay. on YouTube. Yeah. I tried to find it on Netflix. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's almost not on here. <laughs> all all the juicy ones are on YouTube, okay. and uh, the two I recommend watching are a funny thing happened on the way to the moon and astronauts gone wild, but. I was watching how Joe Rogan really flipped the script on that man. He was. Yeah. He was really anti. We've gone to the moon, and then all of a sudden he was a hundred percent pro. We've been to the moon. You know, he's like, oh yeah, there's no doubt about it, and uh, that that really kind of was a very strange. Did he explain like why he changed? No, he didn't. But Joe Rogan or um, Eddie was kind of calling him out. He's like, you know, how'd you go from this, you know, yeah. the stance that we'd never been to the moon to all of a sudden uh, we've we've definitely been to the moon? You know, mm -hmm. like, and he had no explanation for it. I mean, until I find evidence or, like, I hear evidence that's, like, really proving that we've gone to the moon, I mean, I just, I don't, I don't believe it. Yeah. I, I mean, I've seen too many things that show, like, how we haven't been to the moon, so. Yeah. I don't know. yeah, how would we be, I think it's super cool if it's, if it's, you know, indeed mm -hmm. real that um, we're looking at populating mars you know did you did you know yeah, that i heard about that you know elon you know did you know that like elon musk is actively recruiting astronauts to mm -hmm. on a one to go on a one-way trip to mars but then I, live there and like build there and yeah make, to like, colonize i guess that's the right word yeah, to go colonize, colonize mars yeah. um i think that's if that's indeed happening that's super cool um <clears throat> there was i think a movie on that um, this dude, he was, I guess he was on Mars and, um, I think he was like the last of his crew members and he was there for like years trying to get signal back to earth. Mm -hmm. I forget what it was yeah, called. Yeah, I know. He had, you know what yeah, I'm Matt, I think it was Matt Damon. Yeah, I think Matt Damon was, was the actor was. in that. Mm -hmm. That was an excellent flick. No, that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's going to be. I, I hope it happens. That'd be super cool. I'd, I think uh, if I, as long as I could take my family, I'd go. I'd, I'd go so in a Mars? minute. I'd, yeah. I like if, if Elon Musk approached me and said, hey, man, you can take your wife and kids and they were down, I'm down. <laughs> Get me away from this craziness, right? I, I doubt people are going to be shooting people up on Mars, right? Like, yeah. it's sad that you, you know, you don't want to live in the city because the city's crazy, right? Yeah. 
Like this, the city's freaking crazy. Like I carry a gun. I shouldn't. I carry a gun. I don't. I don't want to say everywhere I go, but I'm getting. I'm more and more. I'm starting to carry. Just last night, I spent like an hour looking for concealed carry pouches. Um, yeah. If I lived in Arizona, a place where you could just openly carry, I would always have a gun on me. But the problem is, you can't imprint here. It's like it's against the law. Like if you if you concealed carry, you're not supposed to be able to see any trace yeah. of that. Right. And that's hard when you're. It's summertime and you're. You're trying to, you know, dress cool. You have a T-shirt yeah. on and shorts, and you want to be strolling around with a, a thick nine millimeter with a couple extra magazines, right? Or uh, not magazines, but clips. Mm -hmm. um, you better have some big pockets. I know. Brendan turned me on to this. He wears a big. He got a bigger fan. It's a bigger one. I now. like it's, it's big. It's like this big. It's kind of, you know, yeah. looks kind of weird, you know. But at the same time, when he but opens it, looks it like up. His hip, when you open it up and drop it down, man, he's got his he's got his nine in there and he's got two clips on the sides. It looks yeah. it's pretty tight. It's pretty dope. Yeah. So I'm, I was looking at it last night. I might I might have to order it. Um, but I'm a small dude. He's a big dude, so for him it doesn't look like that big. It doesn't look that big. Yeah. But on me, yeah. it's like it'll be a little awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready to pull the trigger on the fanny pack though. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I think you can make any. I'll just, I'll just keep my pistol in the glove. But you know, the cool thing about jujitsu is you can make anything cool by putting a Gracie logo on it, right? Like you can take a totally uncool yeah. fanny pack and put a Gracie logo on it, and all of a sudden it's like super dope. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what it is, right? Um, so what are, you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on us living in a simulation? Any, any possibility of that? That we're not base reality, as Elon Musk likes to say? Base reality. Yeah. I think it's possible. I mean, how could it not be possible? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Nikki? You think we're living in base reality in real? Do you think that everything is, you know, as real as real gets? Mm, kind of. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, as far as I know, this is what I live in, so I don't know anything outside of that. I haven't yeah. read up on anything outside of it. So, um, again, if I found evidence that would seem very, like, um, what's the word? That would turn my mindset, like, hey, this could be here. I'll be like, yeah. well, well that's, that's definitely true. But, I mean, <laughs> what, what? I, I haven't researched it enough. I don't but think. living in a computer simulation? Or a... Uh, well, we say I, computer because computer is the technology much, that we yeah, have that yeah. we would do something like that in, right? But when you say simulation, though, no, I just think matrix. That's yeah. that's really yeah. Matrix. That's fairly. That'd be fairly. That'd be what we would be in. I mean, I, it would be like the matrix, right? Except, you can't leave. Except yeah, may, maybe <laughs> may, maybe the difference would be that. You can't log off. Yeah. Maybe we're yeah. not jacked in. Maybe we're just a program. You know, yeah. like mm -hmm. the like the. Uh, Merovingian, you know, or whatever, you know, maybe, maybe we're just a program. Maybe we're not. Uh, I found it really interesting. I didn't, I didn't give it a lot of consideration yeah. until Elon Musk said it was like a, don't quote me on the numbers, but it was something like 99 billion to one. You know, not, like just statistically, statistically, he basically said he's 100 percent certain. He just said we are, quote, we are living in a simulation. You know, his for him, statistically, we are living in a simulation without a doubt. And when someone that intelligent says something like that, you know, like I, I got to I got to think about it. I got to ponder it. I got to yeah. sit there and yeah. say, it even does, if I hadn't it pondered it before. It does make me but, sure. but yeah. what really makes it interesting, right, is. When one of the things I I actually enjoy doing, uh, call me call me nuts, is I like and I enjoy looking watching flat Earth videos because they make when you watch them they really make interesting points. It's like um, the fact that our planes fly based on a flat Earth map. All of our routes, everywhere we fly, would be should be completely different if we're a globe. We do not fly the fastest routes based on a round earth. All the routes we take, and if you, it's interesting because if you fly around, uh, you know, we have that, what's called the AE map, that's the flattened map, right? The azimuthal equidistant. 
which changes the dimensions right. of, of the earth. The cheapest flights are always based on this three, if you're traveling far on the other side of the world, right? This, this, this dog leg that makes no sense on a round earth. You're like, why am I flying way over here and then up and down? But then if you look at it on a flat map, it's the straightest course. Yet they were gonna charge you more to go the straight way, but they charge you less to go the dog leg. And it's always like that. I've, I've done a lot of traveling and I always want, and then when I watched that, I was like, man, that makes a lot of sense. And then what are the odds? It's like, statistically, what are the odds? And I know I changed gears from simulation, but I'm gonna circle back to that as to why I changed gears in a minute. What are the odds that from the North Pole, no matter which way you go, from if you're standing at the North Pole, if you go, you hit Antarctica, you hit the walls of Antarctica, right? These 300 foot sheer cliffs, which basically, that means that in theory, it does work that Antarctica could be a perimeter. It does work. If you, and it, it, it is that way. If you go, if you go south from, in any direction at the North so you're, Pole. You're a hardcore flat earther? No, I'm not. Like no, think I, I like to think about it because they make, like uh, another video I watched, and I, I know it's repetitive for people watching this, um, <clears throat> but one of, the, one of the videos I liked on the flat earther, there, there's two that, that I liked. One that I liked was that some, some intelligent people with money yeah. went and tried All to the find the curve with lasers over the you know over lakes and over oceans going and and they couldn't find it and they you know they didn't see any deviation and i'm like that that right there is you know in, interesting to me like why why can't they see that curve how did they go out they should have observed you know x amount of feet or it was like a lot it was like 15 feet or something like that but they didn't observe anything not even an inch you know or another one is that like uh, a guy launched a rocket up, um, you know, and it hit the, it hit something. It, it's, it looked like it hit something. I don't mm -hmm. want to say it hit something, but it just it kind of stopped mid flight. This thing here, this thing is doing, I don't know how many, a couple hundred miles an hour or something, and all of a sudden you hear a thunk and it just stopped. Yeah. Oh. You know, and that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. um, also. Another really interesting thing is that if you look at the, the rays of the sun coming through the clouds, mm -hmm. uh, and there's, you can look at this in any photograph, you could pull up any photograph on the internet, the rays always come out of the clouds like this. And I can't, I remember people talking about like the flat earthers that have done all this math and they've got their own scientists and whatnot. They've got their own, you know, they got their people, their, the people on their side, they've got pilots who have converted like into flat earthers that are like mm -hmm. jumbo jet pilots saying, yeah, man, it, it only, you know, it's the logic only works if it's flat. Right. But, um, <clears throat> they estimate that the sun's like 250 or 300 miles up in the up in the sky right but if the sun were you know i don't know how many miles away it is 99 million or something yeah. you know some crazy stupid number i heard stefan molyneux say it once but um yeah the rays would logically come straight through through gaps in the clouds i mean if something's that far away and it's penetrating you know when you, when you take something close, it's here. If the light source is here and the clouds are here, then you'll see light coming at all directions from that. But if your light source is way, way, way up there, like, you know, miles and miles above you, you you're not going to get any of this. You can't get that. It, it has to be this. Uh, <clears throat> because there's no way you can get this when the object that's emitting the lights up here. Right, and it's not refractions. It's not refractions. No, refractions. It's light. That's what I was just gonna say. It's just hitting the back of the cloud. And no, it's going through. It's where there's gaps in the clouds. It's okay. there's very there's been very very, you know, convincing. You know, compelling people. You know, these people they seem intelligent, and you're looking at their explanation. And they're like, yeah. this isn't refractions. Here we have cloud that has holes in it. Here, here, and here. And look at the angles where the light's clearly coming through the holes. It's impossible if the sun is that far away. And it's stuff like that that, so it's, it's things like that that make me wonder, maybe it's not round and maybe it's not flat. Maybe it's a simulation, right? Maybe it's both. Because if you're in a video game 
right? And imagine how video games progress. He, we, the programmer says, well, they're on, a, they're on an earth and it's round. Yeah. But technically, it's nothing. It's not round. It's not flat. They just kind of said it has to have these effects. You know, it has to have these, these properties Correct. so that it works, it right? Rules. Yeah, but it's some, you know, you're, you're, you're creating this weird um, logic to, you know, but, but so that, that's one of the reasons I think maybe sometimes we are in a simulation, right? Because then, you, then you, you could explain a lot of these inconsistencies that um, when the great developer was developing all this, he so kind of overlooked. So what, what are we doing with science? Are we hacking the simulation? Yeah, maybe we're, we're trying to fit, you know, when we find these, that's where we find, you know, like, uh, like we're, the double. figured out chemistry, biology, physics. Now we're into quantum theory. Are we just hacking the computer as we go? I don't know if we're hacking it, but we're trying. We're definitely we're studying this logic, rules. you know. Yeah, yeah. And figuring out figuring out rules, right? Which, you know, and at the at Makes the sense. core level, and, and figure it out, you got to break it. Yeah. Well, then what was the simulation made for? I I would I would just think that it would be for studying. Um, yeah. It would be for studying. Like, what if you wanted to know? Like, let's say you were a superior race. And you wanted to find out what the best um, uh, government is. You could run a simulation with millions of people over here and say, let's try democracy, let's try socialism, let's try communism, let's try... Yeah, exactly. And just like, okay, well, that didn't work out too well. Maybe, maybe you know, you could kind of see what works best in the... In the you know, it's possible, right? It, it would make sense. Um, yeah. Uh, for me, everything's everything's gray. Like I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sold yeah. on anything, but I I do find That's how I am. I'm not like sold on it unless I have like really good evidence. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I mean, um, simulation could be possible, but I just I don't think I know enough about it. Well, even if even if you're because deeply religious, yeah. like well, let's <laughs> yeah, let's say you're religious. Let's say you're deeply religious, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're a hundred percent certain that there's a God. Yes. If God could create us like that, right? Just like pff, you're there. Seven days. Seven days creates the everything in our existence. And if He can erase it that quickly, and He can, like theoretically. Theoretically. I mean, if He did, then He, he would have to be able to just. Then that for Him is not base reality. His no. base reality would be something we can't comprehend. He's outside of it. He's outside of it. So even if you're deeply religious, we're a simulation because, yeah, um, yeah we, we exist. But, in, I mean, it'd be like a computer program that's sentient, you know. You exist, you know, you think, therefore you are, but yeah. I can wipe you out. Therefore, you're not base reality. You know, I can just turn you off and you don't, you don't think anymore. You don't exist. So, I mean, if you look at that, on, at least on one level, uh, our creator's level, we're not base reality. Um, so, aliens, uh -oh. aliens, I'm, I'm not big on this one, I'm not really like, I don't study aliens a lot, you know, like, yeah. I, I, the only one that I really subscribe to is the Anunnaki, um, but I have, no, I wouldn't doubt, I wouldn't doubt it a bit if there were a grays and, uh, Typical. Yeah, Pleiadians and all these, all the, the Draconians. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's huge, huge groups of followers, sure. right? That, 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 that um, um, a lot of these, a lot of these. I don't know the word for people, you know, that that have that belief, you know. But these con conspiracy theorists and in, in ETs, they believe that. We're either we're either that there's both on the planet, draconian or Pleiadian, right? Like that's the star. Like that's the that, those are the constellations. Like all these ancient megalithic structures, okay. they all have these portals that point somewhere, right? Like they'll either point to this constellation or this constellation, and they, in they almost all either point to this, dra this draconian constellation. Or this Pleiadian oh, okay. constellation, right? This 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 star that's that they call the, the Pleiades, or it might might not be a star, it might be a constellation, but it's something like that. I, I, again, I don't give it that much. I don't I don't delve into it that much, but yeah. I do I do listen to it, and 
kind of remember tidbits of it, but um, there's a huge, huge group that believe that, um, and they believe, I guess they believe that like the Pleiadians are like the, the good ones, like we're the, like the light, the light creatures and the draconians are the, the darker ones, you know, and then yin that's yang. this, that's this, yeah, the yin and yang, and that's this um, oh, that's friction that goes on in our world, right? Friction. Um, but what are your thoughts on aliens? Um, I don't think it's too far-fetched to think maybe yeah. that they figured out how to break time, and it might be just a really advanced version of us mm. coming back to check on us. Yeah. I, well, I would, I would, like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. You know, like time we're coming, travel. We're coming back to maybe tweak the steering wheel a little bit. Like, hey, you're getting off track here. Yeah. That would be super, man, time travel would be, I, I would think, I would, I would, I would hope the creator would make it so that time travel weren't possible. Because you could. You can undo everything at any point in time. Like no matter how much progress you made, it can be undone. It can be it yeah. can be screwed up by someone else. You know, it can be like even if you went back and perfected it, some other dumbass farther down the line can go forward, <laughs> get more forward. And, you know, and then you get into the multiverse, and right, that's all happening right now anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I I subscribe to the theory of our cosmos is so huge. It's like it's yeah, beyond it comprehension, mm -hmm. and there's got to be unlimited amounts there's got to be so many aliens out there that i exist a million times there's got to be so in many order to make it from where they were they'd have to learn how to time travel anyway unless their lifespan was if, if they lived 50 well, light years away or they've been traveling for 50 they, light years they can break space and and skip from one anyway um yeah, that would be interesting. Can we can we travel faster than the speed of light, right? Can we can we bend? We can't even Star measure Wars. it yet. <laughs> um, bend space time. That would be cool. So, do you think that? Or how how up are you on the Anunnaki? A little bit. I watched a couple of. You sent me a couple of links. And I yeah. watched two of those videos. It's pretty interesting. For sure. You found it. Uh, do you find like what? What I were your What are your initial thoughts on it? You kind of kind of convincing, or is it kind of like some Star Trek shit? Or <laughs> I'm not sold, but I'm, but I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. But it's also not impossible that they were just a better version of us that sometimes split. You know, one of the third reset of the planet, and they just happened to. Evolve. Yeah, maybe, I mean, the, maybe they got out. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, I don't know enough about it. It's just interesting to me how. It's very interesting for sure. I could watch videos. I could just do uh, everything in the Bible. Hours. Well, I watched two of those videos. And, oh my god! I just oh, I know. Three hours. I know, especially yeah. if you're watching the Anunnaki. If you're blazed, already had nuclear weapons back then. Yeah. So what's the time frame? Are they like they're saying they're two hundred and fifty thousand years ago? Two hundred and fifty thousand years ago is when we were created, according to when all we accounts. Were created or? Was when Homo sapiens were created. And uh, four four hundred and fifty thousand. Well, humans. I, yeah, I, I Homo don't. Homo sapiens are only seventy thousand. Okay. Old. Yeah. Modern humans, right? I th Homo erectus. I, lived Homo for two million years. Well. They created us, quote unquote. They they created yeah. Adam, the Adamu. I don't know what that. I don't I don't know how that maps over to, yeah. um, so scientific find. right. Like, yeah. all I know all I know is that they said, uh, you know, in Zechariah's teachings that four hundred and fifty thousand years ago they came here, and two hundred and fifty thousand years ago, they created the first Adamu. They were the first Adam, right? Okay. Uh, but I but what is interesting is I was watching. Before I, well, no, it was about the same time I got into the first Zechariah stuff, or probably the same year. I don't know which one came first, but I remember watching this video. Um, it was Discovery Channel or History Channel, but it was on DNA and how they traced all the DNA of all the humans back to Africa. All the way back to 
all the way all the way back to Africa. They said we all had one ancestor, and it's this this like little village is still there where it came from, you know, where we originated from. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, what are the odds that all the stories in the Bible match all the Sumerian accounts, yeah. and that the time frames they give match our science, right? Like, and they wrote this down as history, you know, and that right there has the the odds of this. We're talking about. 250,000 years. Yeah, but that's just a drop in the bucket in 250,000 years. Yeah, but for that to match, what I'm oh, saying for is for that up, for yeah. that to match yeah, up sure. and then all these other accounts. And I don't – there's something wrong with – for me, there's something wrong with religion. You know, there's something – it's like, oh, this huge faith. Like maybe it's all the, you know – uh, you know, uh, Mary just got pregnant and, you know, with Jesus and no one, you know, there was no partner. And then you see the paintings of this big guy in the cloud, you know, like looking down God. And, you know, it's like, but when you, there's obviously something real there for all this lore to filter down thousands and thousands of years. So they're all the same story, just yeah, but they're written accounts. They're like the Dead you know I mean? Sea they Scrolls. All, they all have a flood story. They all have yeah. a prophet. Yeah. They all, they're and all then, the same story, just split into different and, religions. And when you start reading Zechariah Sitchin stuff, that's all there. And that's yeah. the amazing part. Like that, that for me is the part that makes it convincing, right? Is the fact that all the stories in the Bible are there. Um, you know, and they, supposedly they gave us the base six. Yeah, the yeah, the yeah. I can't remember if it's base six now or base sixty. I can't remember. Base but, six or sixty. Though. Yeah, but uh, the sexadecimal. I think it's called. I think that's another term for it. But uh, yeah, all our time. Um, so they gave and, us time. And and our uh, algebra. You know, like that's where we get like you know all our degrees of a circle, three hundred sixty mm-hmm. degrees of a circle. So. Uh, yeah, it's all pretty interesting. All right, let's let's switch gears here. Let's talk about. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, the next one I said, there's a t- is there a tenth planet in our solar system, right? Because that would that would also corroborate or, or certainly give credence to the the possibility of the Anunnaki theory, right? Are are, are you familiar with the tenth planet or the one that broke up? And turned into the asteroid belt? Well, uh, so that story, what happened yeah. is, um, I, th- I think it was Nibiru that c- came into our solar system, right? And uh, it, it got caught in our uh, sun's orbit, and it's on this huge, the theory is that it's on this huge elliptical 3,600-year orbit. But oh, early okay. on, when it was, when it was kind of joining our so- solar system, it hit what used to be, uh, I think it was called Tiamat. Like Earth, Earth is basically the remnants of, if I remember this right, Earth is the remnants of Tiamat. And like basically Tiamat got cleaved by Nibiru and half of that became the asteroid belt and half of that became the what was left, Earth. And if you look at all the planets, what's really interesting, even that, even the, there's science that, that, that corroborates that. Because if you look at... Um, if you look at like three dimensional, what they propose our planet looks like three dimensionally, yeah. and this is again that just, just that goes against the whole flat Earth model. But let's say let's say it is accurate. If you look at these three dimensional models of what our Earth looks like, it's not round. It's all it's all lumpy and it's got a massive divot taken out of it, and it's all it looks like it was cleaved, right? Yeah. And uh, if you look at other planets, like any of them, the moon, Saturn, Venus, Uranus, whatever, um, they're smooth, round, you know, um, you know, pool ball looking things. You know, they're, 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 they're round. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, that's, that's really interesting is that all these stories that these books that Zechariah has written, they, they kind of line up, you know, that they, if you, if you look at any of our science, it always matches what he has written. And a lot of this, um, we're finding out after he had written it, 
Yeah. You know, like like it wasn't him making his tail match science. It's as, as science comes out, he didn't know about when he wrote 250,000 years ago. They had no, they had nothing pointing DNA going back. They didn't even know how to, they didn't even know about DNA when he wrote this at the time, right? Like going back to uh, Africa 250,000 years ago. So, um, but yeah, so apparently we're 99, even nine, NASA right now is 99% sure that there is a, another planet out there in our, in our solar system. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you've read up on that. Are but they calling Pluto a planet again? That I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. But Some no, there's. Some people think it is, but technically, since it's not big enough to be a planet, they yeah. say it's a star. So. Well, not a star, but. A, or not a star, but you know what I mean. Right. Satellite. Some type of yeah satellite. Yeah, satellite. Um, but yeah, they're saying that they can. What they can do is they. I guess they run back these models of all of our um, planets of all of all the you know going around the sun, mm -hmm. and they can see where. Uh, oh, I don't need. I don't know how to explain this right. I, I need to be like a physicist or something. But they can. Yeah. They can see where the bends are. Where, where gravity is pulling, they can see where somehow, I, I can't explain it. What's pulling, what's pulling what? Well, they can see that... Um, Have you ever seen the helical model of the solar system? Helical? So the sun is shot out of a cannon and we're all just... Oh yeah, no, I've seen that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So we're not, it's not stationary and we're all just twirling around it. It's out in front. Right. And all the yes. Are following yes. It. And that would make sense with the flat Earth because if our Earth is spinning like this, following the sun, the only thing that's exposed to the heat of the sun is the top of the Earth. So if we're just occupying ten percent of the Earth, and it's a globe, that's the only part that's melted yet. Very yeah, interesting. Helical model. But somehow they can tell. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen that hurling through space like that. Um, but. No, somehow they can use it, ha and it has to do with like we can't see the plot, the planet, but we can see the gravitational. You can see it bend the light. Well, you can see it where it's um, affected the trajectory of other planets, where where the grat went. Oh like, yeah, yeah, they play off each other. Yeah, That's what you're saying. yeah, they, they 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 believe that there's, but it's so far out there, right? It yeah. would be, it it could be anyway. You're you're talking about a thirty six thousand year. Orbit, or thirty six. Sorry, thirty six hundred year orbit. That, that's huge. Imagine yeah. thirty six hundred years to go around the sun. Um, it's a long ways. My game's off today. Um, you ever heard of the theory that we're ruled by reptilian shapeshifters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did watch V when I was a kid. Yeah. And it was a great movie, great show. Well, it was a show, then a movie. I yeah. Think. Yeah. yeah. That was a show. That's and right. They dropped a movie at the end, and it was a great show and a good movie for the eighties. But no, I don't believe reptiles. You ever uh, seen any David Icke footage? You ever seen that guy on YouTube? No, but I've seen a lot of reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, he makes a good living uh, traveling around the world, giving huge conventions, you know, speaking at conventions. Uh, there's a and writing lot of books. suckers out there. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've seen a lot of reptiles. <laughs> It's fun to watch though because no, it's it's totally fun to get into and, and laugh about, but I could never take it seriously. Yeah, but it's always interesting because they'll they, you know, um, they have some kind of pseudoscience, right? Like they'll yeah, have they'll can. have this evidence that they produce, right? And when I see stuff like that, I'm like, <clears throat> I don't rule it out. Like yeah. I just mark it as a possibility. I'm like, it, it's it's possible, right? It would be interesting if that were the case. Like, what if, if they were if telling we're in a us? Simulation? Then yes, anything's possible. Anything. Sure. Well, even if we weren't, even if we if weren't, we weren't if you want to talk about, we live in a multiverse, right? Mm -hmm. There probably is a shape shifting out a thing out there. Shift between them. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's possible. Um, you, what do you? What are your thoughts on chemtrails? Yeah. No. There's so much more efficient ways to do it why would they bother with chemtrails yeah mm. it's interesting I, I never I never you know how potent whatever it would have to be whatever they're spraying how potent it would have to be by the time it dispersed down to our level 
But I have seen, um, I, I'm not big on this one. I'm not, I don't do a lot of research on it. I don't watch all, I, I don't, I think I may have watched like one or two videos in my time about chemtrails. Yeah. And, uh, but, but they do, they do have those few f- photographs or even video walkthroughs of these planes yeah. that have all these tanks inside, and, you know, <laughs> and it's like, once well, again, it's, it's neat and interesting to go down the rabbit hole. I just, it's, there's yeah. many more efficient ways. Why not just put it in your food mm-hmm. and then box it up and sell it to you? Mm. You just gave them an idea. Good job, yeah. they're already doing I think they're, I think they're already doing that. Yeah. I think that's yeah. done. Yeah. yeah. Go to McDonald's. They're yeah. already doing it. Yeah. I think they're already, they're already killing us slowly. Well, they're, what they're doing is they're feeding you this type of food. So when you hit 30, you have to start doing these drugs and then you're, yeah, so you be holding for the rest of your life. Pay for all these medications. And as you age, you increase your medications over, and then that's all. It's just a big game. Yeah. Yeah. If this is a simulation, then the greedy ones are winning. For sure. I think they said that it, it, the gap is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, you know that that one percent is getting smaller yeah. and smaller and smaller, yeah. right? Like more and more wealth is going for that yeah. to that super elite it's class it's a sickness mm. yeah it is you, you know what's amazing is you never hear anything about the Rothschilds doing anything right like you never <laughs> you hear you that never hear about it no you don't hear that oh the Rothschild just donated a yeah. hundred billion dollars to you know Ethiopia or something you never hear that and this is like the richest family on the planet I never hear yeah. them do they have enough money to change the world yeah, twice over. Yeah, and still be the rich, one of the richest families in the world. They could fix everything in the world. Well, I don't know if and, you can do that. Well, most things. You can do, most monetary you issues. Get everybody fed and housed. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, they're not trying to do it. Have you ever heard of uh, UBI, Universal Basic Income? Yeah, UBI. Yeah. Have you heard of that? So I guess there's there's like this. Um, they're even running tests on it. Like mm-hmm. I, I can't remember where, but someplace in Europe, one city went ahead and like started with X number of their citizens yeah, and, do a test run. and doing test runs where basically every and they they think and, and another person, the first person I heard talk about this was Elon Musk. I, I like listening to him talk. He yeah. always he's a I wish I was as well spoken as him or Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. but. Um, he talks about that the, that's the future, a universal basic income where everyone will have enough money to live. And, th- and that, yeah, need that. Uh, yeah, especially like 20 years in the future yeah, because yeah. 90% of jobs are, I'm just making up a number, but a, a large chunk of jobs are going to be, you know, taken by robots and computers, right? Like we're so not going to, there's not going to be li- building automation and fire alarms at yeah. a tiny rate in 20 years. There's, yeah, there's we're gonna eliminate all the jobs. All the there's jobs are gonna be jobs. eliminated. When cars start driving themselves, yeah, like legit start. Driving yeah, well, themselves. even even like Amazon, like it, when most of the distribution happens, in the warehouses I'm, I'm, by their by yeah. themselves, and and I work in all the Amazons. We have a national account with them. Yeah, and I've seen the videos where they have amazing. these. Yeah, that they have like little robots that'll like pick up the packages and take yeah. them where they need to go, and and then there's net- a sorting facility on the north side. They have two shifts. Uh, a two o'clock p.m. and an eight o'clock p.m. Yeah, and they get paid for a shift, and all they got to do is sort the boxes. So if they can do it in three hours, then they get paid for a shift, and they go home after three hours. Dang. They'll sort twenty-eight thousand packages in four hours, and then go home for the day. Hmm. And that's all just humans and, and then, belts. Well, then and you look like in the mix. They're, right. Their facility up by the airport is, I want to say, 1.3 million square feet. 1.3 million square feet. Yeah. On the roof. And, and then you talk about, like, um, distributing the packages with yeah. drones, drones, right? So it's going to be... Eliminate GPS and FedEx drivers. Robot uh, sorting followed by drone distribution to homes and... Um, you know, it's kind of a scary thought if you think about it. Like robots just taking over. You know? Skynet they wouldn't be taking over; they would just be assisting. But yeah, but you think about you know, I don't want to get you getting into AI because yeah, in order exactly. to take over, that you have to have a, an AI that works, and I don't think you can have an AI until you figure out quantum computing. Yeah, but you never know. 
But they, we supposedly have they sentient. Have. Mm -hmm. we, we supposedly have okay. sentient programs today, right? So the, oh God, I can't remember the name of the test for it. Turing. Turing test, 35%. Yeah. So you gotta trick 35% of the people communicating with the entity into believing that they're communicating with a human. And they've already passed that with text. Like get a crowd of people in a room and start sending them all text messages. Yeah, I don't think this is right. about faking though. Like they, they have. No, it's not we, faking, but if you're talking to a computer or a robot and you don't know, you're, you're now. But we're talking about like, for example, um, I think it was Google. Google had some AI running mm -hmm. that started communicating with another system, another AI, and they developed their own language that oh, developers, so. that oh. nobody could understand, yeah. And they had to shut down <laughs> both the AIs. Plug. They pulled the plug. Pulled the plug. It's already happening. Because they, yeah. well, that already happened, right? Because <laughs> they couldn't, they couldn't yeah. make sense. But they knew they were communicating because they were doing their tasks. But what they didn't like is that they were communicating in a language that nobody, nobody that it was, they yeah. imagine that these two AIs conceived a way to communicate that couldn't be outside of our ability to listen. Yeah. And we couldn't even, um, you know, reverse engineer it. Like it was, yeah. it was beyond our capacity to, um, to break it. So yeah, yeah they shut them down. Good. Yeah. That, that's, our, that's already you're, happened. You're already but supposedly, um, <laughs> I can't remember the author. This is such a good, such a good documentary. Uh, it's the guy who wrote a book called Singularity, uh, and his name is um, I can't remember his name right now. But uh, let me see. Let me see. This is now our listeners are going to be like Singularity documentary. I got I got to see this guy's name. Yeah. I have to remember to look it up on YouTube because I always try and look it up on like Amazon or Netflix and I'm like, I don't see like some yeah. of these things that he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I couldn't find the Clinton Chronicles yeah. on anything but YouTube. I thought it was on Netflix though. It might be. I saw it somewhere. Dark Transcendent Man. Dark Ray Lakers. Kurzweil is what it's called. What it? So the documentary is called Transcendent Man. There was a movie made. Well, he So he coined the term uh, singularity, right? And... Uh, are you familiar with what that means, singularity? Singularity is when we reach a point where you can't distinguish what started off human and what started off robot. So basically, we'll have androids walking around that will look so real yeah. that we won't know if they're human or android. Or halfway in between. Yeah. We won't know if they started off robot or they started off human. Yeah. They'll be interacting. And, and that is called the singularity. Um, but in that documentary, which is probably 2010, 2011, I think, that, I think I first saw it in 2011. It was probably a year old when I saw it. He shows you science that'll blow your mind today. Like yeah. today. I remember they were taking like little shaved slices of human brain and they would hook it up to diodes and then that that brain would that hook it up to like Microsoft Flight Sim mm -hmm. and it would start flying the plane. At first it was just crashing, crashing, right? But then it figured out how to fly. They'd keep the, the, the slice of the brain alive by giving it proteins in a Petri dish, right? But it would fly all over the world and it would land and fuel and, you know, basically it it needed stimulation and it also didn't, you know, it just, it didn't, stimulation wasn't just crashing all over the place. It learned that it could fly and control where it went and it, and it flew around and, um, wow. yeah, that is amazing. Right. Yes. But that's, they also went over to Japan and he looked at some of the AI over there and, um, they talked, he talked about, you know, I want to say it was that documentary where they talked about this ridiculously expensive computer that they had in Japan yeah. that was like totally sentient that we already had it. And it was, and, and what he was talking about in there was how long it would take for that to get down to the size of a phone, right? Yeah. Before, before all our phones are sentient. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I can, yeah. Her? Yeah. And what, did you see that? Yeah. I thought that well, was a great was, movie. I was, a good was movie. debating on watching that. Oh, is watch it. it. Watch it. Really it watch it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to ruin it. I love that actor so much. I love that actor. He always does such Hold good movies. Yes. Yeah. He flipped everyone out. He did some, he did some, yeah. 
just some stuff. Everybody does some stuff. <laughs> He's a nutty dude. He's but a, you can do that, right? When you're, when I you're, did some stuff in hotel rooms. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he made a couple movies right there in the middle of his career where we're like, what am I watching? Really? But I watched him. But he's a powerful actor. He can get away with that. It's called when yeah. when you're when you're rich and famous. That's called being eccentric, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just, I mean, look at Jim Carrey right now. Yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty deep out there. It's out there. Um. <clears throat> so, did we talk, we didn't really talk flat Earth. I don't think so. I never got your you, I never we got your sentiments on it. on it. Uh the only way I could buy into it is the helical model. If we're if the top of the Earth or what we think of the top of the earth is facing the sun and it's, but that's hard for me to swallow that. I don't know. It's possible though. Like, like I, I don't, for me, for me, it's a matter of just, if, if it's true, if it's true and we're just part of a globular earth, then we would have to rethink a lot of our science. Mm. But, it's totally possible. It's t it's absolutely totally possible. And I'm not saying probable. Yeah, and I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's totally possible. If you look at, if you go out and watch, uh, there's like two the two main leaders of this. I guess if you want to call it a movement, would be uh, Eric Dubai and Mark Sargent. And these guys are like hardcore. They're they're the guys out there making videos with 200 proofs and. Um, My, my my iPad just shut down for no reason. Interesting, mm -hmm. but um, but we it, we could be a prison planet. We could be this massive Earth. It would make like if you tied flat Earth and simulation slash prison planet. If you tied those together, it would make more sense than just saying the Earth is flat. Yeah. If you said the Earth was flat and we're in a simulation or a prison planet, then they would have every reason in the world to miss represent everything misinformation the earth is round right when it's really flat and just a snow globe on the top of a <laughs> yeah but i think that's a that's also a lot of it is when people hear flat earth um i mean 500 years ago everybody in the world thought the earth was flat yeah and and, and but when you when you I think part of the problem is when you hear it today too, people just imagine a disc floating through space, right? They don't imagine the possibility of a much larger planet yeah, and us being limited to a, a, a very small piece of that, yeah. um, which is a, which is a, the most probable possibility in a flat Earth, you know, scenario. Um, yeah, that's that's how I would see it. Like, I, I think if there if if our Earth were quote unquote flat, that's what it would be. It would be it'd be a globular Earth, massive in size, and possibly possibly many of these prison planets experiments yeah. going on, right? Yeah, it's possible. Um, prison planet. Yeah, experimentations, right? They're just. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that say we're here we are we are imprisoned here right like like we are there's something wrong with us like right like we we have mal intentions and we're here to see if we can either be fixed or uh, <laughs> or we're just here for eternity you know like yeah. this is hell and we're here because we're we're not we're not right right like we got issues like N N Nikki's savage she's all messed up all messed up <laughs> oh my gosh well, all messed up yep yeah well they gave me my dog so it can't dog. be that bad well, I have my dog yeah. at home. She's my life, so I mean, can't be all that bad. There you go. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think it's all bad. I think we live in a beautiful. beautiful I think it's earth. pretty in most parts. You just have to. But find there's the right definitely to darkness oh. that you need to avoid. Anywhere, there's gonna be darkness. Of course. You know? So you just have to find the, the positive in it, I guess. Yeah, we got some messed up people on this planet. We do. For we sure. Got, I mean, one in five Americans is on an antipsychotic. One in five. Mm. So if you walk past five people, one of them is taking a pill to make them not crazy. Hmm. I didn't um, know that. That could be due to it. Um, well, I heard something about technology making people kind of crazy nowadays. Like, just could being be. on your phone give, gives people more anxiety yeah. and, like, depression. So Constantly being they, battered by yeah. technology. Yeah. But... None of us I'm know not anything. That woke, so. No, none of us know. We're all in yeah. the dark. I mean, 
It could be anything that they're being, they're psychotic for. Now, but, you know. the hardest, the one that I have the hardest time giving any credibility to of mm-hmm. all is the hollow earth. You know, there's people that are, hollow earth? yeah, there's, there's yeah, hardcore. There's this, playing too yes. much Minecraft. Yes, man. There are, there are huge groups. Of, yes. That's the first. Oh my gosh. I can't believe you haven't looked into that. No, like I there's people, there's a lot of things I haven't looked into. There's, well, I, I shouldn't say looked into it. I don't look into it. Right. Yeah. But I can't believe, like I spend so much time, everything pops up on my yeah, screen. Everything. I'm like, they're like, here, you might like this. I'm like, am I down? I've went that far down the hole that you're proposing this to me. Um, but yeah, I can't, there's people believe that there's people that believe the earth is hot, just like literally like a, like a, like a shell. light bulb. It's such a shell and you can go on the inside and they believe there's a sun in there oh. and that you've got so all these, that there's a, what, like journey to the center of the earth. They think there's like a whole other, yeah. whole, whatever ecosystem. Yeah. There. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what they believe. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't think we could even survive in there. Like, there's no, no oxygen Can't down lie. there. You know, like we haven't even gone far enough down. We haven't even hit. Well, if you made the, the Earth hollow, then gravity wouldn't work, then we'd, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> there's people out there that still dispute gravity. Mm. That you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 if you say something, someone's gonna find a way to they, say, "Well, that's not true." <laughs> I mean, every time you take a step forward, it's just a controlled <coughs> of not falling down. Right. How do you not believe in gravity? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I believe in gravity. That's, I do yeah, believe. But there are people out there that don't. There's people out there. But at the same time, like, um, I think one of the examples, and I'm, I'm not, again, I'm going to, I do no justice. My memory is so bad. Yeah. Um, but there's a video out there of someone floating an anvil in like mercury right and like somehow and i don't know how but somehow this disproves the gravity theory right like the fact that 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 an anvil floats in mercury because mercury is more dense than an anvil right and they say that 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 proves this it's called buoyancy yeah well they they believe in this like density model or something they They believe that we're yeah i don't know again i I did it mercury is more dense than an anvil and therefore it's just like Water's more dense than you, so you float mm-hmm. when you're full of air. Right. <laughs> when I'm gassy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so did we did we evolve from apes? Do you think we evolved from apes? Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%? Uh, my opinion. Okay, 99.99. Yeah. I guess you can't be 100% about anything. Yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. we're just smart monkeys. We're just smart. What you do you think? You think, you think we evolved from apes? There's, there's... I think we evolved from, like, different kinds of apes. Yeah. The Anunnaki, I mean, <laughs> the Anunnaki theory is that they that these what did they, they came down and took, took an ape and made it better. Yeah, I don't think they called it an ape. They called it hominids. Yeah. Right. They called them like these these bipedal hominids, and they took their DNA and mixed it with it. But there, there's this guy, um, and I may have sent you one of his documentaries. The guy's name is Lloyd Pye. And Lloyd Pye has this explanation of how Bigfoot and Sasquatch are real, and yeah. and what? yeah, and and that there's that for every race of humans, like you know, Caucasian, Asian, um, that there is a matching hominid. Uh, there's a matching like Sasquatch out there, right? Um, apparently, they have these little ones and like. So there's like different kinds of sasquatches. Yeah, something? yeah. There's For the each yeah. There's the there's the uh, abominable I snowman. Think. There's sasquatch. There's there's these smaller ones. There's a yeti. <laughs> so what would a Caucasian be like? <laughs> well, you gotta <laughs> watch. To and, I, and I want. <laughs> I wonder if they're racist, you know, like, I wonder right. if, like, Sasquatches are, like, fucking yetis. Yeah. Right. Hey, right. fucking yetis. Asian God, Sasquatch. the yetis. You fucking yetis. That's going to be my new thing. You fucking yeti. Oh, fucking yeti wannabe. Yeah. <laughs> Get a shirt that says that. No yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to see some yeti mom. You're not a Sasquatch. You're never going to be. You're a yeti. You're going to be a Neanderthal like me. Yeah. So, but but it's really good. You like uh, he, man. If I watch people like this, like Lloyd Pye, um, 
I can recognize when someone's more intelligent than me. I can recognize when someone's <laughs> more educated than me. I can recognize when someone's more uh, better spoken than me, when their brain works better than mine. Like th that guy's brain <laughs> works better than mine, you know, and I'm like, and he's on and about this theory. And I'm like, man, there's got to be some substance behind it. Some, this, this guy's intelligent, you know, like how do you get, how do you get, you know, either he got fooled or this guy's been researching this for 20, 30 years, you know? Yeah. So, but he's, he's certain, you know, or at least he believes that there's several, you know, iterations of Sasquatch and that all around the world, they have these, they have these stories of these hairy upright walking creatures. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, and he believes that those are what was experimented on to create. And, and that's how we ended up with different races of, you know, modern humans. Mm -hmm. Right. He, so, um, um, hmm. that's, I, I haven't heard that theory. So that's no, it, it's really, it's a really good watch. If you just look up Lloyd Pye, L L O Y D P Y E. Um, he, he's like, a. He's a supporter of Zechariah Sitchin. Yeah. And I've watched his videos. Yeah. And he, he really agrees with everything Zechariah says, but he's also built onto it and added his own um, theories on top of that. But, you know, he, he believes in general what, what Zechariah, and he's become his own. He's become, I mean, I consider someone like that a scholar. Whether they are or not, I, I consider them a scholar. They're, they're well educated. Um, they've done a lot of studying and they're speaking on a subject that they're educated on. Yeah. Um, but he also has this, uh, and it gets at the, I think he has something called the star child where he found this skull and he, he's had it tested all over the place and it's an alien skull and he shows it and some, uh, it's pretty interesting, but you got to watch it. Like he, like he, he has proof that he's had it tested by, you know, different scientists and um it's he claims to be an alien skull it doesn't look like a, it's it's clearly a it looks like a real skull and it's not a human skull and it's not any animal you've ever seen it's it actually looks more it actually looks what more like, it like, like it's more like more like an like a gray it's oh, like, like it's like small. bigger head at the end and more pointed down here and bigger eye sockets it's like a it would it would look like a what what what, we, what they call a gray um so, and my last question, my last thing on here was uh, civilizations lived on Earth before us that had technology we still don't have today. Now, I'm not, so what, do you think there's any possibility that there have been civilizations on the planet that are more, that were more civilized than we are today, that had technology that we don't have today? Yes. Yeah, I don't doubt that for a second. Yeah, I actually think that's highly probable. Yeah, more likely true yeah. than not. Yeah. Because... I mean, the Earth is, as far as we can tell, with the science we have today, the Earth is 13.5 billion years old. Yeah, I've heard numbers oh. of five, but but yeah, that's, so let's just say it's somewhere between... Well, the Big Bang, the Earth is not that old. The Big yeah. Bang occurred 13 and a half yeah. billion years ago, and then yeah. whatever happened to where yeah. life on Earth began. Yeah, there's... In, but five, can you, can you imagine that number of time? Five billion years? Like, that's a ridiculous number, five ridiculous billion. Number. Like, this planet's been supposedly spir you know, spiraling through the cosmos for five for billion time. years, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I could imagine that. So my latest, um, for a long time there, I was really hooked on Zechariah, and I still am. Like, I don't pass up a good Zechariah or a new Zechariah documentary if someone else does a... Uh, a video on YouTube. I love watching anything re regarding the Anunnaki, and um, but now what I'm into is megalithic structures. Yeah. Holy I crap! At those. Holy it's oh no! Fun. It's fun to just watch the videos. Yeah. Have you heard the one, the new theory about the Pyramid of Giza being a being a huge battery powered water battery powered I superstructure? Uh, I have. I have seen that. That yeah, it, I just saw that last week. Yeah. Or earlier this week. Yeah. yeah. The Giza power plant is what they, yeah. yeah, the Giza power plant is what they called it. Mm. Yeah, I have seen that theory. Um, and now there's science out there that says that the Great Pyramids could be 13,000 years, 13, years old. 13,000 years old. 
And that's what they're saying. That's what I they're saying. The scientist, but he said he, he said he. It's all based on water erosion. Of, yeah, all based on why he said he got yeah. out of the truck. And he said within five minutes he knew they yeah. were wrong. Yeah. But he's been looking at erosion his entire life. And and here's the thing is that the the whole reason we give it because you can't date rock. We have no way to date it. It's all about someone. The the the, one of I guess one of the original uh, I don't know what you call them you know uh, archaeologists that got into the pyramid. He found the name Kofu in there. Okay. That's that's what we dated it on Kofu. Basically, we believe when we found that name written in this chamber. And he was one of the, you know, um, pharaohs of of, um, of Egypt. We just associated it to him, just all because they found this yeah. one, just one name written in red. Ku, I think it's I think it's spelled Ko, either Khufu or Kofu. I think it's pronounced Khufu, but uh, all because of that, we attributed it to Khufu. And um, but yeah, now they now they think that the pyramids are and. There's a really good documentary out there called uh, The Pillar. It's either The Pillar or Pillars of Enoch. Mm-hmm. And it's this theory that Enoch is who built the pyramids, the Great Pyramids, Enoch. And that's... Uh, <clears throat> he, are you familiar with the Book of Enoch? No. No. Okay. So have you ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Yes. Okay, so the Dead Sea Scrolls are these by all accounts, biblical writings that date back to the times of all the other biblical writings. And for, for, you know, a lot of people argue that anything in there should be included in the Bible, Correct. right? It's like, it's, they're, biblical, they're biblical writings. Yeah. And one of the books in there is what we call the Book of Enoch. And Ethiop- Ethiopian Christianity included it in their, in their, um, in their Bible. They added it in. So okay. some... Some Christianities uh, have added it, but what it is is that it's the story of Enoch. And I get, don't quote me on all this because it's been a long time since I've listened to it, but I think Enoch was the father of Methuselah, and Methuselah was the father of Noah. But I'm, Noah is under, you know, okay. Enoch, right? He's, he's a. a, a one of the generations under Enoch. But um, supposedly Enoch got taken up in heaven, right? Like he went, like they, they came and got him, basically. Okay. He was a child. He would have been a half-child. He was a half-breed of the Anunnaki and um, Adamu. Adamu. Mm-hmm. And I think that's interesting because that's what they called him. They called us, the, they called the, the earthlings that they created the Adamu, and then we call him Adam. And then yeah. <clears throat> they were created in Eden, which is actually a place in the yeah. Middle East. Eden is still there. It's a, it's a place in the Middle East. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, well, but, get, but going back to, because I'll always spin off to the Anunnaki. I could talk about them all day. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if we go back to this, like, civilizations ahead of us, for me, all of these structures, which are all around the world. Yeah. I'm talking Baalbek, the, 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 um, the pyramids. You're talking about Sacsayhuaman, Puma Punku, Machu, P- Machu Picchu. You're talking about Kailasi Temple. You're talking about this technology is all around the world. And we can't do it today. We can't. The, the, the truly amazing part that I like to explain to everyone, that because if you, if you don't look at this when you see it, yeah. And if they don't talk about it, you'll never have that interest in these monolithic uh, structures. Is that some of these things are made with, you know, 150 ton stones with 12 cuts on them, 12 yeah, angles. I a lot of it. And these angles, let's say there's, let's say there's, you know, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle, it's right? It's beyond anything we can yeah. even fathom. It's three. It's a meter thick, which is three yeah. feet, and. The stones mounted all around it fit ex- with razor blade tolerance. They're also scaled front to back. So not only is there 11 perimeter cuts, then the rhomboid on the back, which is 11 perimeter cuts, is smaller than the rhomboid on the front. Yeah. So the whole thing scales it. It's impossible for us yeah. to even consider. Yeah. 
that some that they did it with copper and <laughs> yeah. hammers, right? And, they, and, make and knives, you can't do any hard work with copper. It would be, brass. it would be almost conceivable unless they had tools that we power tools. And they and people who have looked at the st structures have seen that they they say that that is a power tool mark that right there. And oh, okay. but but I I think that they would have had to have done it with. Um, oh, there's a word for it. They, 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 we actually have terms for these um, hypothetical materials, you know, or these hypothetical processes, right? There would be a process. There'd be a process for like, like they could make like what we consider stones today. They look like stones to us, right? Oh, but some of these yeah, people propose that it's like a concrete, and that it's just beyond. But because still, so what do you, is there a different mold for every block? That's the point. That right there is the point that I was going to go with. Is that if it's that, poured, it would have you'd have, even, to have a thousand molds for a ten feet of wall. Yes, and you would, and the molds would be just. It, you want to tell me that some that you're you're saying that Incans, you know, who, who lived in huts and wore, you know, thatch, you know, uh, skirts or whatever, were capable of making thousands of different perfectly. <laughs> perfectly cut molds, right? That no way. There's just no yeah, way. There's no way in the world. It's impossible. It could manipulate gravity. Right. Um, what's more than like what more than likely happened also when they look at some of these older structures in like Mexico and whatnot is that you see these massive, absolutely massive s stones mm -hmm. that are just strewn about. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Like, like a nuclear shot. bomb hit there <laughs> and just sent shit flying, right? Although, okay. although the, it had to be way more powerful than a nuclear bomb because you know you look at the damage that was done in Hiroshima or and they didn't have 160 yeah. ton stones, right? That, and they didn't get you know what what they kind of speculate wiped out what what some people speculate wiped out these this, these civilizations were uh, like an asteroid. Like a massive mm -hmm. asteroid hitting our Earth, and uh, and that would have wiped it out, yeah. and, and and led to the deluge, led to the great, the great floods, right? Yeah, like like breaking off ice sheets and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're back. Um, let's move on to lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So Jeff, what uh, what's your exercise regimen? Um, as much BJJ as I can, usually three to four days a week. Um, other than that, just calisthenics. Um, I have a battle rope and a pull up, like a pull up chin up bar, and a 50 pound kettlebell, and that's it. That's all my workout equipment. That's the rope for you. <clears throat> it's not an official battle rope. I was surveying the Dames Point project in the woods before it was James Point Terminal and a uh, uh, tugboat line washed up on the breakers, on the breaker wall. Took it home, had it, oh god, I've had it for a decade now. Mm. It took me 10 years to find a use for it. It's like a big, big tow rope. It's yeah. just like a battle rope. Yeah. It's just not an official right. battle, battle rope. Right. <laughs> I hate those things, man. <laughs> yeah. I've done them. It's it's like it depends on how heavy it is. I can do. This is not like, heavy because it's it's not a battle rope. It's yeah. Actually a, it's actually a synthetic. Yeah, the battle ropes are much heavier. Mm -hmm. They have some of those at um, Bailey's, and whenever I work out with my dad, we'll do after yeah. our whole workout, we'll start working our arms with the battle ropes. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Work. The only reason is work. work. <laughs> the only reason I don't have them in the schools yeah. because of the the debris they give off. Yes. Yeah. They give off a lot it's in of the backyard yeah. and it stays in the backyard. Yeah. yeah. It's just wrapped around one of the legs of my chin up bar and I can just hit it yeah. whenever I walk out there. <clears throat> but I don't do I don't go like all right, I'm gonna go out back for half an hour straight. I'll just randomly walk out of there and bust out some chin ups and carry the kettlebell around for five minutes. Yeah. What kind of diet are you on? Um I only eat fruit before lunch. I don't touch any anything with some weight to it. Mm. So like I'll eat an apple, banana, great fruit. I yeah. don't touch solid other than fruit. Um, I don't eat anything before lunch. <clears throat> and then if I'm not cheating, I eat pretty healthy. 
Yeah. Do you uh, eat meat and everything? Yeah, yeah, I eat meat. Nothing's off the. Nothing's, nothing's off the. No, no, no. I'll eat anything. Um, <laughs> do you do any? You, yeah, yeah. yeah. More than reason. You know, I don't eat. I don't eat three steaks a week. Well, right? yeah, but exactly. If I feel like eating a steak, I'll eat a steak. Yeah. You. Uh, <clears throat> do you do any fasting? No, not really. I mean, occasionally, I, just by really not paying attention. You know, I'll get up on a Saturday morning and just be super busy and go, wow, I didn't, didn't eat anything. And it'll be three o'clock in the afternoon. But no, I don't intentionally do like a 16 and, you know, like 14 on, 16 on. Yeah. Like well, what I do is um, I, I do, I started with 16 hours, mm-hmm. right? It's like someone told me about it. And it sounded really good, like the benefits of it. You consume all your calories in an eight-hour window. Well, I I started with a 16. Okay. I did, and I was consuming all my calories in an eight-hour window. Um, And I did, I felt terrific. First off, like, you you get a focus when you're fasting. You get a focus that you do not have. Like, you're arguably more intelligent. You. you, Yeah, yeah, there's a a theory. I don't know if it's theory or not. It might have been proven. But that when you're hungry, you're... Your brain kicks into fifth gear. Yeah, because you're hungry. Yeah, you're, you're more alert. Goes, right, you're, I just have to keep an eye. It's just part yeah, of your nature, primitive brain, right. and how it works. I think mine works differently than <laughs> no, because like, because right like, if I'm hungry, I start getting more mad. Yeah, my I'm wife just gets like, hangry. I need to eat now. Yeah, my wife will get hungry. I literally no, I didn't eat anything. And I was just so mad. I didn't even know why. I was just mad. And I just, I went in the kitchen. I made myself a salad. And then when I to took go. the first bite, I'm like, oh, my God. First, my wife starts getting, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, getting edgy or mad. I'll, first thing I'll say is, when is the last time you ate? Yeah. And usually the answer is, I'm hangry. I usually I'm like when people are like, hey, go eat that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Go eat a salad. All right. For me, yeah, I can yeah. go. Like I said, I'll, I'll wake up and get busy in the shop on a Saturday, and it'll be 4 p.m. I don't realize I haven't eaten anything. Yeah. I'm just, because I'm just going. Yeah. No, I, so I started with the 16 hours, and 16's hard, man. 16. Yeah. And sometimes I do 16. Like, I, like I, it's not off the, but basically what I did was I said, well, I'm going to do a minimum of 12. Because yeah. when I started fasting, what I realized was that I wouldn't go in, but on a good day, eight hours. Uh, without food usually I was going closer to like seven basically you know I'm, I'm always up till 2 3 a.m. right and I'm and I'm up at at the latest nine I'm usually I'm up doing work late I, I work you know I'm a night owl so I'm up late and I, I'm always I was I was always snacking I didn't well, I realize I didn't, it I guess I do 12 or 13 hours because yeah. I usually don't eat breakfast I don't eat my fruit in the morning until like nine o'clock yeah and I don't eat, you know, if I eat right after jujitsu, that's the latest I eat. Yeah. Well, I pay attention now. So basically, yeah. I, I, I mentally mark when I have my last meal, and I will not eat before 12 hours okay. has gone by. And uh, that for me, I, I can see like um, um, I'm probably losing a little bit of a little bit of fat. You know, I'm kind of my, my body's you toning up. have a specific up. time? Is that three out of your sleep that you do the 12 hours? Okay. Yeah. But then I'm up for another three hours or so. And Before, yeah, see, I'll get up at 6, 6.30 in the morning, and I won't eat until 9 a.m. Yeah, and it's, it's actually not um, – I'll eat as late as like 11, 12 yeah. – but I won't eat before noon the next day. And when I wake up and start work, I'm way more productive. Yeah. When you're hungry, that's, that's you're more productive. That's what I found when I switched to just fruit because most of your energy throughout the day, a lot of your energy goes into digestion. Your, your digestive tract. Yeah. Is a huge sink. The energy. only the only downside with fruits are they might, they have a lot of sugars. That's the only that's you, the only. Well, if, if you, you don't like, grind if you don't grind them up like in a smoothie, and yeah. you just eat the straight fruit, then the way your body breaks down the sugar is it has to break down the fiber to get to the sugar. And if you if you grind them up, it's different. Your body has access to that sugar immediately. Yeah. If you eat a whole piece of fruit, or whether they're cut up or not but not ground right. yeah. or blended. Um, your body has to break down the fiber before you can get to the sugar. Mm. So it's a much later process in your intestines. Mm. So okay. instead of your stomach and small intestines getting the sugar immediately, like a smoothie, yeah. y- your stomach and small intestine break down the fiber, and then your small and large intestine get the sugar later on. And it's almost like an extended release. Mm. All right. 
Yeah, and like the healthiest fruits for your like like raspberries, those are lowest in calories or raspberries lowest in sugar, you know. Yeah. Raspberries and like blueberries. And if, and if you eat, I try to eat my fruit before it's ripe. I try to eat it more on the green side because there's less sugar in a green banana and more fiber mm -hmm. as as the fruit gets riper. The, Does it the taste fiber, different? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. an acquired taste. Yeah. Oh. I love green bananas now because that's what I eat. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more. There's a lot more fiber. The, the fruit hasn't converted the fiber to sugar yet. Okay, so it's more like it's not as flavorful, but it's still like it's a little you bitter. Can taste it, yeah. The greener it is, the more bitter it is. But yeah, yeah. Normally in the mornings I eat like well, since I'm starting this new like diet regimen and mm -hmm. like I'm doing more workouts on top of jujitsu. Um, I've been doing like two eggs and a piece of fruit in the morning yeah. to kind of, but yeah, protein yeah, exactly because sure. I don't usually eat as much fruit throughout the day, so I try to eat it in the morning, let it all digest. Yeah. So, yeah, and all I've been eating is salad. <laughs> so let's talk about let's talk about drugs. Let's talk about drugs. I'm sure everyone out there wants to hear about drugs. <laughs> Everybody wants to talk well, about drugs. Well, nothing. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, in your hand right now. What? Coffee's a drug. Coffee? We're talking, he's talking about like Coffee's the actual card. Well, then you have to redefine drugs. Mm. You, you can't say this drug is bad and that one's not. My definition of drugs is anything that's been taken away from its natural form, synthesized by humans, to make it either stronger or to make other characteristics mm. come out of it. So is cannabis a drug then? No. Yeah. But if you take cannabis and push it through a butane, you know, you throw four cans of butane and push it and you're adding all these chemicals and creating shatter, I would call that a drug. Hmm. Yeah. It's just like, coffee's not a drug, but if you, it's a stimulant. if you put it in, well, coffee's a drug, everything's a drug, but it's a food. Yeah. I don't know. To me, if it, if it comes from nature, it's a food. If you take it and you alter the, the way it affects you, like so if you eat donuts some, would be a drug then? Sugar is a drug. Mm -hmm. That's why, why we're addicted to that's why we're addicted to sugar them. is that's, a drug. It's refined. It's not if you take a piece of sugar cane and snap it in two and start chewing on it, you're chewing sugar cane. Mm -hmm. If you refine that and you make it sweeter and and most sugar you get comes from beets anyway. Very it's almost impossible to find real cane sugar. Mm. I mean, you can find it, but I'm saying 90% of what you get over the shelf is refined white sugar. Yeah. And that's from beets. It's not even from sugar cane. Hmm. You know. buy sugar, sugar cane. Sugar cane's good, though. Like, I've had it. Of course, it's of course. Good. And sugar from sugar cane is better for you. It's closer to the natural source. Yeah. Huh. I didn't know that. <laughs> but if you define, like, people chew coca leaves, and it's a stimulant. Hmm. And then if you chew too many, you get a little drunk off it and pass out. But when you take coca leaves and make cocaine and then make crack cocaine, I, I don't think coca leaves are a drug, but cocaine is. Yeah. But so is Abilify and Zoloft and Xanax mm, right. and all of it. So uh, would you consider cannabis medicine? I think it can be. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, th I think that cannabis has medicinal qualities. I, I would think, yeah, it has medicinal qualities. Yeah, and I, I prefer, I would prefer for pain relief. I'd rather use cannabis for anxiety. Yes. I'd rather use cannabis for. Um, I think I, personally, I think cannabis is a good thing. I think it should be legal all across, all around the world. I think it's bullshit that a government can come in and tell us that something that grows naturally is illegal. I think that's yes. bullshit. But that they're gonna say. Oh, but alcohol is totally legal. It's man-made. It's a, you know, a psychoactive drug that makes you angry, but, uh, but that's cool. That one's legal. Um, you ever experimented with any? What, so what drugs can you talk about that you've ex experimented with? In the past? I don't know. <laughs> 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 how, how much of that money back do you want to get into? Uh, I... I, I Experimented with probably a, more drugs than most people, yeah. I would guess, um, for sure. 
Yeah, that, that's how I was. I, I grew up in Canada. I, I just went whole hog. I mean, yeah, I'll try it. There was a lot yeah. I tried and never tried again. Yeah. There was a lot I didn't try. Yeah. I was smart enough to just go, no, 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 not that. Yeah. I did, um, I did, I grew up in Kentucky and Louisville and, yeah. and cannabis was mainstream. It's that like was, a buffet up there. yeah, it, it, you know, you grew up in Kentucky, you, you smoke cannabis. I don't care. You were just, you were so nerdy if you didn't. Yeah. Um, uh, but it wasn't about that. It was just about everyone did it. Everyone knew what it did and everyone liked what it did and yeah. it, it, everyone was in a great mood. And that was just part of growing up in Kentucky for me. Um, Drank a little bit of alcohol, um, whatever. What about, um, well, you know, what was interesting though is I had never done any type of, uh, mushroom. Yeah. That, that wasn't until recent. That was a recent thing. I wanted to, you know, I heard, I heard friends First talking about did, it. Uh, mushrooms was in, I can't remember what port it was, but they did the port of call before they let you leave the ship in the Navy. And they, one of the things they do, like, don't go into this, they have, they'll have a, uh, PowerPoint, and they'll literally everybody stands there and watches the PowerPoint as the Excel goes over where you can and can't go. Yeah. And there was this place on the beach. I mean, literally like a tiki bar on the beach, serving mushroom shakes. Oh. And we we're like, they didn't tell you that. They just said you can't go to that bar. That bar is off limits. So of course that's the first place we went. Right. <laughs> and there's one of the there's two of the officers at the mushroom bar, and we're like, all right, we're cool. We'll just. Slide in. Yeah, he all here too. You get our shakes and, and head on out. Yeah, we got pretty messed up. Yeah, but it was fun. Yeah, there's, there's almost no hangovers. <clears throat> yeah, unless you take way too many. That's that's um, what I what I kind of felt when I, t I I wanted to try it because I've read about mushrooms as medicinal, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, and um, for me, some of the some of the proof is that you know. Let's look at Indians or Incans or even early, you know, Egyptians or this was something that they used medicinally. And it was yeah. something that they used to become closer to or to, to, to fix a problem. Maybe they had a problem they didn't know the answer to or they um, to mend a friendship. Right. Or maybe to write a wrong, you know or to commune with the dead. Like basically all, no matter what that purpose was, it was, it was always perceived to be a beneficial, good thing with, um, what's the word I want to use for these civilizations? I think these civilizations were you know, prior civilizations were more grounded. They were more, yeah. they were healthier, you know, like technology and government has, I don't think it's made us healthier as a people. I no. think it's made us less healthy, right? I would, I would vent. I I think it's safe to say that Indians were happier than, for sure. You know your your average American, and They're if that's healthier. the case, then it's safe to say we could learn from them. If you're if you want to talk about happiness, if yeah. they were happier, you'd have to agree that you could learn from them, right? And if that was something that they did, if they believe, you know, if if they were already happy, they didn't have a need for this, right? Then it, it must have been a medicinal thing. It must have been a um, a spiritual thing. And that's how I look at it. I look at like cannabis and ayahuasca and psilocybin uh, mushrooms as uh, medicine, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, you know. So I had an you know. I hadn't, I had never done psilocybin, but I read about the, the spiritual side of it, right? And the fact that people use it to get over, uh, actually one of the big benefits of psilocybin is anxiety. You can, you can get over, it can be, fix your anxiety for months and sometimes years. Like one dose of psilocybin can, um, kind of like three to five grams or something like that. But basically now there's been multiple studies and you can read about this this is actually you can watch ted talks on it and people there's talking about of, psilocybin there's a good chance I've already read it. but the fact that um what they say is that e people who have taken psilocybin just one time in their life mm -hmm. some of them report being happier for the rest of their lives yeah just one time one time taking psilocybin i think it hovers, think it hovers right around 70 percent of people are, are, have a positive outlook yeah. on, on the side So I, I had so seen the, the that. 30% that don't, don't report any side effects. Yeah. So it's a win-win because if 70% of people have a very positive spiritual experience, 
and 30% say, I didn't care for it. But the 30% that say, I didn't care for it, have no side effects. There's no blood thinning, leaky ass side right. effects. Right. You just don't want to do it. It's a natural thing that grows in nature that peop- that was probably in you know by design intended for us, and um, or arguably, um, I had heard about the benefits. I wanted to try it. So far, I've done psilocybin once in my life, okay. um, and uh, it was a spiritual experience. It, w- it was actually you know. It felt spiritual. You felt like there was a connection going on that's not normally there. You yeah. felt like, and um, you you uh, you do deep introspection. I did. I, I like analyzed myself, and I, yeah. I like honestly. There was a period of time during this like five or six hour window where I felt like an asshole because yeah. I like you do introspection. You're like, man, I am really. You start see what you do is you instantly see your flaws. Yes. And I, I had seen, like, doing this introspection, I saw all these flaws I had. And I know, because uh, I was with Chin when, when I did this, it wasn't too long ago, and I know she saw a difference in me from that day forward. I, yeah. I know for a fact she saw that, you know, um, you know, towards the end of it, you come out and you're like, I'm going to be a better person. You know, I, I see all these crappy things that I'm doing that you just can't see without it, right? But they talk about ayahuasca being... I believe that you could see all that without it. In time, yeah, in, in but, t- but yeah, psilocybin trip for sure will wake you up. Yeah, anything past three grams is gonna wake you up. Yeah, quick. and then you hear about um, which which I haven't tried yet, um, microdosing psilocybin, which is a which is an interesting concept and yes. that's becoming mainstream. Um, taking you know small amounts that you don't necessarily feel or don't affect you in a way that's like it's not psychoactive at that point yeah like or if it is it's so effect. minuscule it's like unnoticeable you know yeah or you'll the first time you do it you'll notice it and then after that you know if you take five five micro doses a week one per day and take weekend off you, yeah after the first or second you might not notice it the first dose. yeah is it is it uh and i'm curious because i i, I uh, we've talked about this and i know you know a little bit more about this than me is it a, uh, are you, do you think it, you're more pro- productive? Is that one of the things, is that a benefit of microdosing or is it, or is it, is it more about mood? Is it more mm-hmm. just yeah, in general, a better, a better vibe? But if your mood's better, you're going to be more productive. Hmm. Yeah. I, th- there's two things I want to try that are on my list of things to try right now. At the top is ayahuasca. Yeah. I don't know about that. I would try it. But you've read about it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've read about it. I know what it is. I just yeah. haven't tried it. haven't. Are you familiar with ayahuasca? It's a no. mixture of things. I don't know exactly what it is. Yeah, well, there's a root, ayahuasca root, I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure. And then it, it has DMT. It's like the primary. Yeah. That's the primary thing in it, yeah. dimethyltryptamine. Yeah. But um, that's supposed to be like psilocybin times 10. It's supposed to be like yes. really, really, really spiritual and basically, what like uh, one of the guys I like listening to now. This is recent. Like I like I, I wasn't initially a fan of him, but the more I listened to him, the more I became a fan of him. Is a guy by the name of Graham Hancock, mm-hmm. and uh, I really like the stuff he talks about. And uh, right now, right now, what he's into is Gobekli Tepe. Although yeah. he's been in you know, the, the pyramids and he's been, he's, 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 you know, he's growing and he re, he goes into different areas, but right now his big thing is Gobekli Tepe. And he believes that what he believes, um, but maybe we'll come back to that. That's okay. pretty cool to talk about what, 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 what Gobekli Tepe is, is possibly about. But, um, he I think he said he's done like 250 ayahuasca trips. Oh, what's that? Yeah, I think he wow. said 250. I'm pretty sure that's the number he said, that's 250. A psychonaut right there. Yeah, and he's, he said it's not about, like, he's not addicted. Well, first off, yeah. ayahuasca breaks addictions. Like, if you yes. are addicted to something, yes. it will instantly cure you of that addiction. Yeah. Um, the first documentary I'd ever seen. I believe any heavy dose of psychoactive, whether it's LSD or DMT or mushrooms, I believe any of that could break up. A, a, a lot of people do mushrooms. <laughs> The first time in their life at 35 and come out of it the next day and go, why do I smoke? Yeah. 
and they quit smoking the next day. Yeah, well, but here was the thing about ayahuasca. The first video I'd ever seen on ayahuasca, when I, I'd heard about it, and then I wanted to study up on it, the very first video I'd ever seen were they were taking these – it was a documentary, and they were taking crackheads from California, yeah. and they were taking them to Peru for an overnight shaman-assisted. No, like a three-day, uh, two-day. Yep. You know? And now I've seen what a crackhead has to go through to get off of crack yeah. or meth, right? Like they, they get sick. They throw up. They crave it. They're just like yeah. – they, they would kill for it, right? They, you know, arguably they're um, – but on ayahuasca, overnight their addiction's gone. Same thing with smoking. Same thing with any addiction. Like if it's a if it's a some type of chemical addiction, you can take ayahuasca and your addiction is fixed overnight. They 100% success from what I saw. That's what that documentary showed. All the people that they took, and this yeah. was common. This was how they. They'd fl- they'd sure, it can't be 100%, but it, I, yeah. the numbers are well, extremely high. As, it in Jamaica. Too. It was a hundred percent as far as it, it didn't mean that it didn't mean that those people didn't get re-addicted later. Yeah, yeah. But they weren't sick. It was a hundred percent as far as okay. they would be sick normally two or three days later, throwing up, vomiting, oh, craving. Week, yeah. They weren't sick and they weren't craving. Hmm. From that standpoint, it was 100% effective. Now, that's not to say that they didn't go off Relapse. memory, yeah. right? And then and maybe go back and say, well, let me try it and see what it was about. Or get, you know, and then I wonder what the numbers hooked. are for how many relapse. Yeah. But uh, so I saw that. I thought that was incredible, incredibly powerful. But then as I read more about ayahuasca, because what they weren't talking about was the spiritual side of it. And then you watch people like... Uh, um, I, I watched a video by the London Reel. Uh, there's also this girl, she called herself the Psychonaut. And then I watched Graham Hancock talk about it. And these are deeply, deeply spiritual experiences, like more, more spiritual than, than anything you could imagine, right? Like basically you do ayahuasca and you have no doubts that there's an afterlife now. Like, right? Like, like if you doubt there's an afterlife, you do ayahuasca and they say that you can commune with the dead, you know, like you can ask questions of dead relatives and, um, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I've never, I've never done ayahuasca. Yeah. <laughs> but you, yeah. Could, you could, for sure. Yeah. There's, so there's I want to. Some, there's definitely something there in psychoactive substances. Yeah. That is worth <clears throat> scientific exploration <clears throat> and or personal use, but that's up to everybody to each his own. Yeah. Um, that and I and I and I'd like to try uh, microdosing psilocybin. I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think I don't think it's. Um, I think some of these things make us better people. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the bad rap, like just the bad rap that cannabis has, yeah, is all corporations that have been uh, pharmaceutical companies yeah, sure. that have marketed their own stuff knowing that with cannabis that have no market for that stuff. And we're talking about multi-billions of dollars of markets. You, you know, um, and a lot of people just don't realize that. A lot of people have been duped. A lot of people are sitting there, th- have been convinced that... You know what the first... Here's your brain on... Remember that one when you were yeah. little? Here's your brain on drugs, oh, fried eggs, you know. Remember that one? That's what I grew up with, right? And, you're, you're, and everyone was just like, there was this thing going by of, of how bad drugs were. And was actually, era. cannabis was making the most well-adjusted kids out there. They didn't have, um, yet you look at these parents all drunk every night. Alcohol's legal. They're beating their kids, right? They're all angry and shit. Um, nothing against alcohol, but just don't don't argue with me that alcohol is better than cannabis, right? You smoke a blunt, you're not going to beat your kid. You drink a 12-pack of beer, you may beat your kid. That, that's all I'm saying. That's the difference between cannabis and alcohol. Um, so we talked about drugs. Um, are you, do you consider yourself religious or spiritual? I would say spiritual, not religious. Did you, uh, did you grow up practicing any religion? Yeah, or? yeah. And my parents took us to church. What, what, what? Uh, Assembly of God. Assembly of God. I'm not even familiar with it's that. It's a Protestant branch of some branch of Something. Episcopalian. <clears throat> yeah. What, what branch do you, are you, do you subscribe to, Nikki? Man, 
we talk about so many woke topics. It's just, I don't know. I subside, subside. I subscribe to Christian because, I mean, that's what I was raised on. And I even went to church today. And I don't know, just the feeling, it always makes me feel good when I'm in there. We're talking about God. And, you know, when you're talking about the Anunnaki, and I'm just like, man, that that could be possible too. But, I mean, I have an open mind about it you know, a lot of things. So, yeah. you know, well, I, I'm sticking to Christianity because that's, that's I don't what think, I know. I'm hedging my bet. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, it's 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 a whole bunch of people getting together with good intentions, yeah, right? It's, it's a like, great place to go. It's a great place yeah, to it, 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 it is. It may not, it may not, may not be. I'm sure there's plenty of people that couldn't care whether or not God exists. They just like being in church. Yeah, it may not There's be historically accurate. You know, it, it may or may not. It may be. It may not. But uh, but it's a it's a it's a good group of people getting together to get high on emotions. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. so. Uh, I mean, I've grown up in a very like religious family because like mm-hmm. my dad's side of the family was like Catholic, so we would. You know, for a period of time, we would go to Catholic, and my mom's like, oh, we found this Christian church because her side was Christian. And that's kind of what I, like, converted to because it's not as harsh as, like, I mean, it's pretty much the same, but it's not as harsh as, like, Catholic. Catholicism. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I go, I go to Christian. So yeah. Just, just I grew up. I was raised, you know. I grew up going to a Christian church. I, grew, I went to, uh, actually, it was Technically, it was Lutheran Baptist, and my dad made my mom and dad made me go every Sunday. And there was a reward. It was Bob Evans. Was, if I went to church, that was the motivation. <laughs> That's how they got me. Come on, we're going to Bob Evans afterwards. All right, okay. I guess I'll go up. I'd sit there and I hated every minute at church. I'm just sitting there and couldn't sit still. Yeah. You know that's how it was when I was little, but you know. Like, I like the church that I go to now because I just listen, and it, it just makes sense to me. I don't know. And it's not all, like, oh, hate these people. It's it's all, like, love, and it's yeah. love for everyone, not just one person, like, one race, you know, one culture. It's everyone, love for everyone. And I think that's – I like that part, and it kind of motivates me to live my life in a more, like, positive. a positive way. Yeah. And that's why I really like to go, you know? So Yeah. That's – I've got I've got two problems with the church today, and and, and even if I were religious, I wouldn't go, mm-hmm. just because, um, you know, I owned an IT company, and we we took care of quite a few churches. We actually, mm-hmm. you know, um, some of the some of these churches I've seen making millions of dollars. I had a church one of my one of the churches just absolutely absolutely exploded, and the the pastor man, they're driving. Hundred thousand dollar Mercedes. They're driving. They, their their house is a million dollar house. They've got two of them, three of them. Those are the they're, churches. I'm just like, that's the ones I don't really like to go to. But yeah. I try to find like really good, like you know, community. They could have helped someone for that. If you're if you're if you're a pastor, I'm. I mean, you 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 probably need to be setting the example. If you're living a better lifestyle than some of the people giving ten percent of their you know earnings to you. And you're not taking that and being responsible with it and feeding someone hungry. Instead, you're bu- you're buying a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes AMG. There's a problem there, right? Like, and I, and I can't, I I couldn't be part of that. But also, like, I mean, I hate to say it, but some of the worst experiences I ever had was with uh, pastors. I mean, I, I had me personally. Um, I was in talks to sell my IT company to a pastor of a church in Jacksonville. Um, and I and I told him I was like I'm just considering it. Someone had he he owned an IT company. He was okay. a pastor who has his own church and owned an IT company. And then someone linked us up. Someone knew that I was thinking about selling my IT company. And they put me in, in touch with him. Yeah. And uh, we talk about it. And I said, Well, I'm just considering it, but I'll hear you out, whatnot. First off, the dude rolled up in a fucking SS Camaro, yeah. all tricked out. Like this what? pastor rolls up, brand new, you know, swings into the spot, and you could hear it growling. I was like. This pastor's got a fucking attitude, man, right? Like, he's, like, rolling. he's fucking rolling out in a tricked-out Camaro all <laughs> loud and shit, right? And then I'm like, and he's got an IT company, so you know he's about capitalism, right? But 
we talked and I talked about the income of my company and I talked about how my, you know, I built my company around my employees, whatnot. Right. And about a month went by and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just not ready to pull the trigger right now. I'll let you know, you know, cause we, we were, he was proposing some things and you know what that, you know what that asshole did? He went out and hired my, all my employees. Yeah. Just hired them out from under me for more money. Just made them, just offered them more. <laughs> and, and half my clients went to him, but it was the scummiest thing. Oh, yeah. It was the scummiest yeah. thing that I could fathom. Like, I mean, it was, we're talking scummy at, at, at the, we're talking the epitome of scum. And he did it intentionally. He did it intentionally to take my clients. And uh, he got half my company for free, you know, or he got a portion of it. You know, he got a portion of my company for free. Um, and this guy has a very successful church. If I told you the name of the church, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'd probably make more enemies than anything throwing the yeah. name of the church out there, right? But um, offline, I'll tell you. But uh, the guy was just a douchebag, and he'll probably listen to this. Um, I, I wouldn't doubt it. The guy, the guys uh, in the jujitsu community. Well, those are the churches. Like, I can understand where you're coming from with that. Like, those are the churches that you gotta like. You kind of have to like watch out for those. But yeah. honestly, like the church I go to, it's very, it's very like modest. It's very like they're not pushing you to do anything they're just like hey thanks yeah. for just coming listening you know that's, the kind, of church that's the kind of church i like to go to because it's not like forcing you to do anything it's just like hey you can listen if you want to leave there's the back doors you can leave if you want but everyone's welcome and like they they do save like a lot of money and they go on trips to like ecuador and oh, places like yeah they go on missions and they, they actually bring back the like, videos and pictures of it and they do a lot of drives to save like um, materials and go send it out to them. So they, and they even do like fundraisers for like homeless people around yeah, in our, the city. Our so, church back home used to build a house every yeah. every summer. They build a house for one of them. Those those are the church. Like every summer, yeah. they would build a house for one. Of That's the legit, members, man. One of the members of the church that needed yeah. it the most. They would assess everybody. And you're getting up. Sorry, you gotta wait till next year. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think um, I also think that the church as as a whole. Um, in regards to Christianity and probably probably Judaism and probably Muslimism, I mean, I hate to say it. I know I, I'm sure I'll make an enemy for this, but I think they're the most corrupt organizations out there. If wow. you oh, yeah. if you look at the molestation rate, there's no organization in the world. I don't think there's a, a then our, maybe our government, right? If if th- th- isn't that the irony? Yeah. It's like if we had any any organization that could compete with. The Catholic Church, as, as far <laughs> as it'd be the U.S. government well, and other governments too, not just the United States government. Right? Or, yeah. Uh, uh, but and my point is, you have the sickest, you have the sickest people between, in general. I mean, I, I God, I can't remember the number of priests like ju- just in like New Jersey, mm-hmm. like they had this crackdown and it was like two hundred and fifty or three hundred priest yeah and they just moved yeah. them. and i'm like holy i didn't even know there was that many priests in that area what is it a hundred percent penetration like <laughs> uh it's mind-numbing how sick they are and yeah. and then the pope knows about it and doesn't do anything instead of instead of what they do is forgive them right they that's that's the, they just say well we'll just forgive them and move them somewhere else and then they start molesting kids in, in other places yeah. so crazy yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah, how I mean, you know they're not, you used they're to not really like, the true, like... Well, in the Catholic Christian Church, you used to be able to get married and have children. A lot, many, many years ago, before the Catholic Church, what, what it is today. Yeah. I don't know the details. Yeah. But huh. I know many, many years ago in the Catholic Church, you could get married and have children. Well, I, I don't understand what, like... I, I'm not sure when it changed or how. I haven't studied it, but I. What with who could get married and have priests children? Could oh, get priest, married and have priest, children yeah. And okay. have a family. Yeah. Well, I know, yeah. But it's normal for Christian pastors to get. Yes. Yeah. You know, for sure. There's no. There's no oath of monogamy or whatever you call it there. Mm-hmm. Um, um. Oh, here, here we go. So Jeff, while we while we got you here. I have this section called "If You Could." <clears throat> so, if you could have any job or profession, what would it be? Hmm. God, I don't know. I like my that job. was my answer. I was like, yeah. I just, I don't know. I would... You do? You like your job? Yeah. I like, man. I work. There's, there's little things that aren't perfect yeah. about it, but it's hard. yeah, I like my job. You I know don't... who? Yeah, I, I envy. Uh, go ahead. I 
mean to cut you off. No, that's it. I, I, I work with a good group of people, and but I, I just have a positive outlook. There's things I would change, of course, but... I, I like the people. So I'm in IT, and I, yeah. I've been in IT for 24 years or 25 years now. And um, I work from home, and I like the people I work with. Mm-hmm. I do, like, genuinely. I have, I have, I have some, you know, I have some friends, and, and we help each other out, and we work well as a team. But I hate my job, man. Like, yeah. I, I hate. Just like the hours. I hate sitting in front of a desk. Oh, yeah. my so God, I, man. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't be a desk jockey. I can couldn't do, do that. It. I need to. I want to be out. I want to be yeah. moving around. Like I'd rather be a trucker, honestly. Like that, you know, wouldn't make the same money, but I'm out there seeing the world. You know, you're out there. That's I mean, what I do a little tiny van truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We 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 cover all the way from Savannah, Georgia, to the west coast of Florida, down to Orlando, Titusville area. So I mean, yesterday I was in Gainesville. Yeah, see, a problem I have is there. There are other jobs that I would that I would do for less money. Yeah. But the problem is my school, right? So my, then it interferes with. Oh, yeah. They they have this, you know. If once travel comes into play, which I love, I, I freaking love travel. Who's going to teach at my school? I'm the only teacher, you know. I'm I'm the primary instructor. Um, I'd like to get more people teaching more regularly. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the. That's what holds me back from changing careers is that, you know, I have the school, yeah, which I love jujitsu. I do. I do love jujitsu. But in a perfect world, um, man, I hate to, in a perfect world, I'd, at this point in time, at my, at my age, I'd rather just go back to training. Like, I'd rather not be a, a teacher. I'd rather. You'd rather train jujitsu. I'd rather just train every day, just just because oh. there's more I want to I want to get more done and there's not enough time. So my problem is. My school's not, you know, there, A, there's, last I looked, there was like 20 to 25 schools in Jacksonville yeah. teaching jiu-jitsu. And maybe one of those were doing, one or two were doing well enough that the instructor didn't have to have a second job. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I only know of one, you know, I can think of one or two that don't have it. And, and they're not killing it. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, yeah. they're kind of just, just getting making. by, you know, making it. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I could do that, but man, I love travel. I need to be able to travel. I, yeah. I, I, I can't, you know, I try to go to Europe every year. I try to go to Asia. I try to, and, and honestly, my IT job feeds my travel, you know, my, my travel thing. Mm. But, um, okay, so if you had a million dollars, what would you, what would you buy or do differently? If you had a million dollars today. Besides invest. <laughs> uh, I'd probably fly my father-in-law and my father to Panama and get them shot up with stem cells. What would that fix? Like, no, my dad has, is on the recovering end of stomach cancer, and my father-in-law had had appendix cancer. Yeah. Yeah, fly him down and get him pumped full of stem cells. Aww. Did you, uh, I mean, are, are you... Um... <clears throat> Two million bucks to cover that. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. In a third world country, of Panama, probably. Yeah, I know stem. They're talking about all the things stem cells can cure today. Yeah, Mel Gibson and that doctor were on Rogan, and he he Mel Gibson took his father down there on his deathbed and they yeah. shot him full of stem cells. You're not gonna live forever. No one's gonna live forever. But yeah. But they say, like, I always figure if, if I had some kind of cancer, I would just starve my body of sugars. Yeah. I would just, I would deplete it 100% of sugar. Because they say that, yeah. um, you know, they say cancer can't survive in the body without sh- without sugar. It can't, really? it can't, yeah. That's what they, so I remember watching these, you know, I'm, more than anything, I watch YouTube. I'm, I'm, I've been addicted to YouTube since it became popular, and I don't really watch a lot of TV. Actually, I don't watch any TV. I, I can't remember the time last time I turned on. It was probably like 2013 when yeah. I kind of yeah, got watch, away from I don't cable. Watch TV, I, we've never had cable. I just watch YouTube, yeah, and I, we, I, we don't have cable. I prefer to watch things that teach you something, right? But yeah. uh, they claim that. Hitler had put all his best scientists on finding a cure for cancer. He wanted a cure for cancer. And they came back, and apparently it was Hitler scientists or, or German scientists were the first to come back and say, the first, not, not the only, that 
cancer can't survive without yeah, sugar. sugar. So if you starve the body of sugar, cancer died. And they considered that the cure. Like, they was like, successful, done. We figured it out. And then Hitler was happy, and he let them, and everyone back, went back to working on whatever they was working on. But that's supposed to be mainstream knowledge, is that yeah. cancer, you know, basically our DNA just gets, just has problems when you flood Pretty the body sugar. with sugar, right? And if you yeah. starve the body of sugar, you're, you know, uh, your body's a lot you more need healthy. a certain amount of sugar. But if the sugar you get is being broken down, it's, it's how your body digests the food. Is it's, it's, it's probably, I mean, man, I, I would imagine that we probably just need to cut out processed sugars, right? Correct. Like mm-hmm. like we were meant to be yeah. drinking water mm-hmm. and certainly not all these candy bars mm-hmm. and ice cream and donuts. And we were meant to be eating fruits and nuts and berries. And only and, occasionally. Yeah. If you were a hunter or gatherer, how often do you think you would come across fruit? Right. Once a yeah. week, maybe twice a week if you're lucky. So, yeah, I I agree, and I but I think that that's how our bodies were were meant to um, operate, and and that it's this huge influx of sugar in in the yeah in modern society's diet that well, sugar causes was these the problems. Reason for the slave trade before tobacco hmm. and cotton. The right. slave trade started with sugar, and then just. We used it for sugar. Why not use it for tobacco and cotton? Hmm. Now Google. Interesting. Uh, I'm I'm not. You know what's in? I'm not big on um, recent history. Like some people are into. Like, don't get me wrong. I just I don't I don't have I don't have the same interest in modern history. You know, if it happened in the last. Are you talking like? Like, I'm I'm interested in everything. Beyond 500 years, like oh, that, yeah, you know that sure. that's that's what really interests me because um, I want pre-documentation. You know, like that that's where the that's where the disconnect is, right? Like that's where the argument is. That's where the speculation is. That's what I want to that's what I want to piece together. And no one, because we didn't have this central repository of knowledge. We've got all these conflicting theories, right? Yeah. And there's so many of them. Um, and that's the, that's the amazement with the Sumerians to me. That's why I can read or listen to anything Sumerian is because they, they wrote shit down 6,500 years ago. Right. They were writing shit down. And that, that's, <laughs> that's huge. In a way, with reeds and clay tablets, but yeah. They yeah. Were. And uh, how could you not be interested in what our first – ancestors wrote yeah. down you know like if that's the first that's as far back as we can confirm you know that's as far back as we can go i want to yeah. know about that that's what i want to know about but i did hear if you're if you're into like modern history and stuff of what um one of my friends ex uh, student of mine uh tony uh jared you know tony, tony. he's a big fan of hardcore history that's a, yeah that's, that's a, good i like that yeah and uh, if I were going, if I, I, unfortunately, I'm just not interested in modern history. Like, I'm not interested yeah. in what happened in the last hundred years or 200 years. I kind of consider that my era, and I'm more interested in. Yeah, I'm interested mo- in both. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's all interesting to me. Now, the only thing that I am interested in in modern history that I, that I have watched countless, just countless videos on is World War II, Hitler. Yeah. I'm I'm fascinated with Hitler. I mean, the atrocities that supposedly happened, you know, with uh, like what 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 would make you do something like that, you know? And then when you start reading like the, the possible theories of why it would happen, like why would World War II happen? Why? Well, it was all about, you know, it's my understanding. It was all about the Jews. Uh, was, that was, I think it was a lot more than just the Jews. It was about putting the Aryan race above all other races. It, yeah, but they, but but why why did he decide to do that? Because he believed that race race he believed that the human race could be corrupted. And if the human race could be corrupted, what what is corrupting the human race? And he believed blacks and Jews and everybody that wasn't Aryan could corrupt the Aryan race. Which yeah, is there, what there's he considered I, to be the most evolved human. At that time, hey, well, he's rumored to be to have a Jewish mom. I don't know if it's true, but that's 
um, or part Jewish or something like yeah. that. But, but so one of the things that, that I've read about, though, and, and watched about more is how the reasoning behind the war was that Hitler wanted to get all the Jews out of Germany. Is yeah. that, um, and I've even listened to him speak about it, that the Jews had stolen, had stripped the wealth of the German people. Yeah. And he didn't, basically, what had happened in Germany, and I, and I know this is incredibly, it's how this is gonna be, I'm gonna have to go up with some new topics because I know I'm getting repetitive for anyone that's listened. But, uh, but basically, 1% of the population, a Jewish 1% was had control took control of like 95% of the resources of oh. Germany and and you know everyone else was in poverty and you had and they controlled the banks and the media which is what we have today which yeah. is which is what you know Hollywood's con controlled by you know d kind of a Jewish cartel if you will and as as is uh, all of our big corporations are kind of, heard of the banking book, heard of a book called uh, Behold a Pale Horse I can't remember the author. He was in the Air Force in the in the I believe late sixties throughout the seventies. And he, he had a UFO experience. And then he spent the rest of his life uncovering what he thought to be the ultimate conspiracy theory. And and back then the big three, NBC, ABC, CBS, where he came up with this and apparently had a lot of evidence before they killed him. But he came up. He wrote the book, and they killed him like two years later. And, and, and what, 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 what was the conspiracy? Was it in regards the, the to government Jews? controls? He called it the big three: NBC, ABC, CBS. But yeah. even back then, the seventies, the government he proclaimed the government was already controlling those three major media outlets. Yeah, and it and and we know that. Stopped. Yeah, and and well, it hasn't we, ended. I, it, yeah, we, I believe that, and I believe that. Our government is, you know, there was a, there's a girl um, on YouTube that showed that all but one president are, were, are have the same bloodline. I don't know if you, if you, I don't know how accurate that is, mm -hmm. but there is a video, and the lady, the girl, did all the research, and she had she used all these different. She used the internet to basically look at all the different heritage like seven, and bloodlines. Seven ways to Kevin Bacon, but the president. They all go back to the King of France. They're all related to the King of France. The, like the I don't, whoever it was at some point Somehow. in time, you know, obviously there's not a current king of France, but they go back to a king of France at a certain like King George or something like that. Huh. But uh, yeah. apparently there's like one that doesn't, you know. And I, I, that's like you got to wonder like how accurate is that? She, you know, it's if you listen to her talk about it, she claims it's accurate, and you can do the research yourself. But uh, you know, what if there is a royal bloodline? Yeah. And um, what if our what if our leaders are chosen? But if they're chosen, they're controlled, you know? Correct. And who controls them? It's, it's If someone chose you, then someone can unchoose you. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, oh, so let's continue with our if you could section. If you had a billion dollars, how would, how, how would that change you? What would, what, what, what would change today I with a billion dollars? I can't even fathom what a billion dollars would be like. Imagine, you know, we here, here it is. You and I can't fathom a billion dollars, and I, I agree. I can't fathom how I, what, how my life would change with a billion dollars. Like I can't, I can't even fathom that. And then sit here and think that there's a dude walking around on this planet with a hundred and ten billion dollars. Yeah. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. hundred and ten billion dollars. Can you like? There is nothing this guy thinks about that he yeah. wants like if his brain just goes you know I, I think it'd be cool to have like 10 Venezuelan hookers here right now you know like yeah. let's just get those on the way you know uh, whatever I like how that was the first on the list <laughs> I'm just saying I'm, I'm, I'm thinking he's a I'm thinking he's a pretty twisted I watched the I watched the episode if you have that much money your, your ability to do things behind closed doors is right astronomical yeah, like we can't even fathom. Yeah, and the only reason I went that that route, not because of my thinking, but because I watched a, a video of you of uh, where Joe Rogan talked about how strange Jeff yeah. Bezos is and how how weird he is. The dude, yes. he's just a weird ass dude, right? Look at Zuckerberg; he's a weird. Yeah, you know Zucker, Zuckerberg's supposedly a Rothschild. The name is a name he took. It's a German yeah. name that means well, and a lot of Jewish names are are, are Germanic, right? Yeah. Like they're. 
they they could be the same. They could be German or Jewish, um, but it means sugar mountain, Zuckerberg, sugar mountain, Zucker, sugar. Um, yeah, it is odd. Sugar mountain. I saw that video on YouTube of him drinking water. Have you seen that at the congressional yeah, hearing? Yeah, yeah. He keeps sipping the water. Yeah. They keep saying he's an alien. Yeah. Because the way he drinks. Yeah. Water. <clears throat> so, oh, here's a good one. I, I think this is the, because I would change all kinds of shit. Holy shit, don't let me be the president. If you could be the next president of the U.S., what would you change? Uh, I don't know. A bunch of stuff, probably. Can't think of anything? Um, I would legalize all drugs and put a 20% tax on all of them. That's, that's a good one board. right there. Legalize all I like drugs, that. put a 20% tax on all of them. Because um, think of the cartels that, that you put out of business right, right there, there right? For education for yeah. the next thousand years in this country. I'd, 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 I don't want to go thousand. I'd probably pardon anyone in jail for cannabis or yeah, for sure, or any kind of type of natural drug, like yeah. like maybe meth heads and maybe living there to learn a little lesson or something. Or but, <laughs> but anyone on <laughs> anyone for natural, if yeah. if they were doing a natural drug, I'd probably pardon them. Um, think of all the cartels. Colorado. Colorado's just giving money back. Yeah. Like, oh, we're making too much money off weed. Here, yeah. take some money. Yeah. At the end of the year, they're just giving money to the people that live in Colorado. Yeah. You get your taxes back, and you get another five bucks because we made too much money off weed. Yeah. I've got a cousin it's just one that, state. Uh, that got and it. What has changed in Colorado? What, positively or negatively, what has changed in Colorado? Yeah, no, it's a very positive and beautiful place, serene to go to, and atmosphere, ambiance, everything about it. Everyone wants to go to Colorado. And and if we haven't learned from that, well, you know, look, if you can't learn from, um, look at Amsterdam. Yeah. It is crazy peaceful, and just about every drug is legal in Amsterdam. You can go there and smoke pot right in front of a cop. You can go there, and they have pot shops. You can just go in there, go in, you know, get some cannabis and smoke it and uh very peaceful there's no crime there there's no yeah. but prostitution's legal um drugs are legal and it is one of the it is one of the uh, i'm trying to think of the right word for it it's just a beautiful place to visit amsterdam is amazing if you go to europe and you don't go to amsterdam there's something I've wrong with been, you but have you ever been to europe yeah i've been to uh See, Jamaica was the 14th country when I went on my honeymoon to Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah, we did Mediterranean Navy. Yeah. But Mediterranean, we never got that far. I absolutely love, Amsterdam is freaking gorgeous, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know how, I think I've been there four or five times. I think Japan is definitely on my bucket list. Amsterdam is somewhere up there. I've landed in Japan, but I've never been out of the Spent airport. Time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's it. You legalize drugs. That's the big one. Yeah, I mean, if you legalize drugs and put a twenty percent, that would tax change. Uh, that board. would that would be a massive change in the world, though, right there. Like that, just that right there. You'd probably feed all the homeless. You'd probably help. You'd probably eliminate hunger in in like Africa. You know, you like have, probably have enough yeah. extra money to do that. <laughs> so probably fund a space program. Who knows? Money for education. Your uh, universal basic income. Yeah. All kinds of all kinds of shit, and it's legal. If you really want to wake up in the morning and smoke crack, yeah. well, wake up in the morning and smoke crack. I don't. I think after a while the novelty would wear off. I I would. I mean, I I would probably still have chemically created drugs be illegal, like meth and yeah, yeah. You could do that, or you could just tax them. Synthetic drugs, I have an issue. I, yeah. I, I think synthetic drugs mess up your brain. They weren't designed by nature. They weren't, you know. Correct. Um, this is what I was saying earlier. You know, as soon as you take a natural substance and break it down and alter it. Yeah. Um, if you could go back in time and change one thing, is there anything you'd go back and change? Is there any one, one thing you'd undo? I don't know. Never thought about that. One thing we're going to do. 
No. Oh, and it doesn't have to be in regards to you, by the oh, way. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, you, you can go back in time and eliminate Hitler. Like, if you, I'm talking, you can change anything, not in regards to you, and anything in the world. If you, could, if you could travel back in time and change anything in the world, what would it be at any time? Hmm. I have no idea. No clue. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because you can go back so far, you yeah. know? You don't know... I'd rather just time travel and go, and go oh. just be a fly on the wall than, Dude, than change God anything. Dang. You'd know how everything was built, when yeah. it was built, why it was there, who was leading the civilization. God, that would be the that'd be the awesome. No, yeah, be I'd, awesome. I'd rather just be able to time travel and, and not actually have an effect, just observe. Like how dope would that be if we uncovered some technology that recorded shit in 3D, you know? It's like, <laughs> like we uncovered that, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's all kinds of archives. They've been yeah. archiving that shit forever. We got video, you know? It's like here we... Well, you don't know the way, the way the Earth works, you know? There, there's entire civilizations buried that we never could know about. Absolutely. I think so. I think so. And they talk about... Yeah. Absolutely. Um... Let's see. If you could, if you could have dinner with anyone from any any point in time, mm. who would it be? You could talk about anything with anyone. I don't know. I guess it'd be a toss up between Einstein and Lincoln. And you don't have to speak their language. You can. Let's just say also you can magically understand any language. Oh, like you know they're coming up with this thing where you just the, put it in your ear. Battlefish. And, yeah. From Hitchhiker's Guide. I've seen those. Yeah, I would say Einstein Einstein or Lincoln. Yeah, Yeah. Einstein I couldn't understand. He'd be talking about shit, you know, like, man, E equals MC squared. I'd be like... Uh (laughs) But it's like... I'd be talking to him like... Giving you knowledge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But Einstein was... The reason Einstein was so popular is that he could speak at this level. Yeah. With other scientists. And then he could drop right down and speak at this level. And, mm-hmm. and make people in the room that had no clue and, and get them yeah. to understand it. Mostly with thought experiments. He did a lot of thought experiments. Mm. Like just think about the in, in visual thought experiments in your yeah. head. That's, that's a lot of the way he communicated. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if, if I could travel back in time, I'd, I'd go back to the earliest... You know, if it has to be a person that people know the name of, it's like at what point in time are they becoming fictitious? But I would, I would say, the the first documented ruler of Egypt, right? Like the first documented wow. pharaoh or something like that. Yeah. I'd go back and just pick their brain, right? Just like, chill. The, <laughs> hang on yeah. for a week. Yeah. So you know, they got some knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, random. Let's get off on some, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna circle back. At the, for, we'll end with some BJJ MMA related related okay. stuff to get back to close out with some jujitsu. But uh, cryptocurrency, what uh, are you a fan or are you knowledgeable of it or are you do a little bit? What it? I've learned from you, you know, if I had the money to invest, I probably would invest a little bit of money. Yeah, but I don't unfortunately have any money to invest right now. Yeah, that's common for all of us, right? Yeah. You know, one one thing I learned though is uh, having had a substantially bigger income once is that no matter what you make, it tends yeah. to be just enough. Like, just like enough. it doesn't once, matter. Once, you're, once your basic needs are met, the more money you make has really no effect on your happiness, or a well, very small effect. But I also mean like um, that's true. They say so. They say anything over eighty thousand today. Anything over eighty thousand dollars doesn't make you any happier. Correct. So, what they've done studies on people that are billionaires, millionaires, and like eighty thousand. Yeah, you've met all the basic needs at eighty thousand. Yeah. Below eighty thousand, you you probably are. It's affecting your mood because now you can't buy the food you want. You yeah. can't pay your car insurance. You're frustrated because of you know stupid shit that you can't. You don't have the money to help with. Mm-hmm. But eighty thousand, last I read, is that sweet spot. But uh, I don't make eighty thousand. But I'm, my bills are paid. Yeah, I have a little bit extra. Money well, I think that the thing about that eighty thousand though is, it's this, it's that magical lifestyle that that yeah. everyone wants to meet. If you downgrade your lifestyle, which is, um, 
that's one of the things I did is we, we, I did downgrade my lifestyle. Yeah. When I, when I lost my IT company, I looked at everything and said, man, do I need to make that kind of income or do I need to fix the way I'm living? Yeah. And now I drive 10 year old cars that are paid for. And that's just, I'm happy with that. Right. Like I, I could, I could go out there and I don't, I, I, I don't have debt. Like yeah. I'm not trying to say that in a bragging manner, but I just, um, you can live without debt and, and right. then life becomes a lot easier and you can afford to live off a lot less. Um, <clears throat> but um, I think if we go back to crypto, I think crypto will absolutely, I think it's going to change the world. And I think it's going to be the largest transfer of wealth to ever happen on our planet. Really? Like right now, what happened is I think there was a point in time when, and I don't know, I don't know when it happened or how it happened, but you know, it takes money to make money. I think that at some point in time, um, you know, a Jewish family or a Jewish, you know, and I'm not against Jews. I, I, I could marry a Jew. I could have, you know, it's not. I'm just. It's just what history kind of tends to point to is that they did. They are superior businessmen, or they they did take over the world, but they're they're also. Um, you know, they help each other. Unfortunately, they only, you know, they, they don't kind of consider themselves a global family. They kind of consider, consider themselves a, a Jewish family. You know, and if you're not part of that family, it's like you're, you're, you're liable to, you, you know, you can be stripped of everything you have and there's no guilt in, associated with that, right? Like I, I would have a problem doing that. And I'm not saying all Jews are this way. I'm just saying that there's a history of at least very powerful Jews doing this. At some point in time, they came into power and money and they've used that money and power to so just keep propagating. Yeah. Keep, keep it rolling, keep it steamrolling. Right. <clears throat> and they control the world now. But what I like is the possibility and I fully support it because I have to be part of it. I have to help make it happen. If it's going to happen, I have to be, it can only happen if everyone, but already it's, it's been a huge transfer of wealth for, for last year. No, this year, I think even in January, the richest person in the world was one of the creator was the creator of I think it was XRP right one of the one of the cryptocurrency he he even passed Jeff Bezos really? I think he I think he surpassed everyone now the value of crypto has went down to about a quarter since January of what it was okay. so he's he's not that he's still insanely wealthy I think the guy would probably be worth twenty or thirty billion dollars today at today's value but you got some insanely wealthy people because of cryptocurrency. And I think that is, we're still at the cusp. We're still at the beginning. You're going to see, if you're holding cryptocurrency today, at some point in time, everyone's going to jump in. They're going to be like, holy crap, I'm, I'm really behind the ball yeah. on this. But but I can still catch, catch it to some degree. But right now, it's still... Uh, it's still those early investors that are going to profit the most. And I'm, I'm, I'm even, even a few hundred dollars is life-changing right now. Like, I, that's what I think. But I think you're going to see um, possibly changing the way our government works, possibly changing because people with money are who change the laws. Unfortunately, that's who writes it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it changes everything, right? Like if you have these, you know, we're under the control of families and business owners with ludicrous amounts of money that do lobbying that control our government. We do have a government, right? And if it's funded from by the right people and lobby, I think lobbying should be illegal. Like the fact that you yeah. can just sling money at, at, uh, at lawmakers, uh, legally, there's something wrong with that. Um, uh, so all right, let's let's close out. We'll, last last section here. So let's uh, let's kind of close out with some MMA BJ BJJ related stuff. We talked about what arts you studied. Um, <clears throat> we talked about how long you've been training. We talked about your lineage. Holy crap! We're just about done with all this. <laughs> what made you start jujitsu? Um, like like what what I made did, you? I did I I, I did aikido. I was, I was training aikido over there on the west side and uh one of the students after class i'd gone use the restroom and came back out and he was they weren't rolling but he was just showing another one of the students a pass like i don't remember what the pass was 
but you don't do groundwork in Aikido. So I started talking to him and, and you know, just picking his brain. And he was like, yeah, it's like Aikido on the ground. You know, it's like finishing school yeah. for, for what you could learn in Aikido. Yeah. And I had to try it. Yeah. I, I believe, I, I actually trained with a group. But like when I lived in the Philippines in, in 2000, uh, I spent time in there. I spent a total of two years there, but between 2005, six, seven, and the most of it was 2005, six, and seven. In those three years, I spent about two years mm-hmm. there. And I trained with a, a, a group of Aiki Jitsu yeah. guys, and um, they did they did give me my black belt, at, you was know, at some point circle? in time. Small like small circle jujitsu. I, I don't know if it. I don't know. I don't know. Like that doesn't mean anything to me if you oh. say that. But it was basically like Aikido. But yeah. the difference being is that they blended in some Muay Thai. Like they blended okay. in striking and they blended in and they were really in the yeah. knife and gun toting. Like they were they okay. were big into it. Like every day there was knife and yeah, gun. There's training. a guy on the west side that does uh, Daito Ryu Aikido Jiu Jitsu. <clears throat> he doesn't formally teach, but he'll you know if you contact him, he'll he'll teach you. Yeah. Um, but I chose that I could have trained. They had all kinds of different schools there. They had Yao Yen, they had Muay Thai, they had, you know, judo schools. They, they didn't have any jujitsu. That was, I was like one of the early guys to kind of go there and share it in Cebu. And, uh, but I kind of chose them to train with. They, they had one, they had like two guys in their camp who had fought MMA and yeah. it was kind of good. They, they were, they wanted real, you know, they wanted real martial arts. They were trying, they, yeah. they were testing their art, you know? But what I realized is that, like, people don't think, like, Aikido is real. Like, like, and hear me out before, before you get the wrong mm-hmm. idea. Like, they'll say Steven Seagal's, you know. I, I think if you look at just solely Aikido and you said, oh, I'll take an Aikido master and you put him in, in a cage, I think he's going to lose every time. <laughs> That's just me. Yeah. But... I think there's a time and place for everything. And even when I roll, I'll use Aikido from time to time from a standpoint as far as like the wrist locks. I'll yeah. use wrist lock takedowns. And my point is that that knowledge I do think is actually very valuable. Yes. Because you can find yourself in a situation to do like another thing we used to practice or what they called surface throws where you'd grab the arm and take them over you. And when you're in a struggle with someone, you can find yourself, and I, I think this plays out in jujitsu every time you spar. You can find yourself upside down, inverted. And, you know, you can find yourself in any in any situation yes. or position. And there are absolute. What I, what I learned was that there are absolutely times when those manipulations or whatever you want to call them, those locks of those manipulations, come in handy. And I use aikijutsu in my sparring, and I know it's. I know I do it to a degree that other people don't. I know that uh, every time I'm rolling, I'm looking to grab the hands. I, like, <laughs> like, I'm like, like, if you'll let me, if you're not aware of it, if I can slide down your wrist and grab your hand, I will take you down that way, you know? And um, people who train with me know that I, I have an affinity for wrist locks. I'm a wrist lock and fool. That all came from training Aikido. That came from me learning the yeah. weakness of the wrists, right? Yeah, and it's the furthest extreme, well, the fingers – but I don't think in competition you can't. Do right, that. right. But finger manipulation is a huge self-defense yeah. maneuver that people would overlook. But at the, but at the same time, it's like, and we bring up the fingers, and the fingers are great. I, w- I would absolutely break someone's fingers in a fight, totally you know, w- without. But the thing of it is, is like, if you grab someone here, they're not going to do anything. You know, they're, they're not going to. Oh shit, he got there. No one's going to do that, right? No one's going to do that. If you get down here. The concern raises a little. It's like, oh, yeah. I, I kind of don't like that. If you get here, a little more concern. If you get here, the moment, you know, people are like, oh, you know, that can break, right? So the point of it is, is that you may get an opportunity to use this more often than you would get an opportunity to use this. Yeah. Just like you're definitely going to get an opportunity here more than, than here. Because yeah. I can grab you here all day long. You're not going to freak out. You're going to like, I've still got lots of leverage there. When you start limiting someone's leverage... Their concern level equates to yeah. tr- equates to that, right, and goes up. So my point is, like even even though you like you mentioned, well, the fingers might be more powerful, you know, like or, or you know the fingers too. Why not grab the fingers and break them? Well, 
I think I think you have less chance of getting to the fingers just because yeah, the there's more really concern. Only come into play if, if they have you in a headlock, or yeah, or, and you can manipulate one finger. Yeah. So, uh, but what I learned from training with that group is that I, probably every martial arts move that's trained has value at yeah. in the right time, yeah. right? You really want all the knowledge you can. Yes. Um, when I did my when I did my MMA fight, um, I fought a guy who was a, who's an absolute beast, just jacked to train Muay Thai and and grappling. He was a yeah. grappler. I I was the superior grappler. I, I, <laughs> I, I know, I, you know, I'll, I'll still bet money on that. He did not want to fight me on the ground. Yeah. All he tried to do was stand up. Uh, and at the same time, all I wanted to do was get to the ground. He wanted to fight me standing. I wanted to fight him on the ground. And he was a superior striker. And uh, that's when I learned the value of striking, right? That's mm-hmm. how I was like, man. Because I used to think prior yes. to fighting him, I was like, I didn't I didn't think I was going to lose that fight. Like, I, I didn't. I didn't. I thought yeah. I'm just going to get him on the ground. And I never thought about someone bigger and stronger than me not wanting to engage me on the ground yeah. like that was never a concern like you, you you think of a guy's big you know you, i'm sitting here thinking y'all they're not gonna be afraid of me i'm gonna be the skinnier of the two i'm gonna i'm lanky they're gonna want to fight me on the ground and when we train ev- everyone fights on the ground you know so i never thought of some dude just struggling to get back up again and again and again yeah. which is what happened i got in this nah, fight with this dude was just, position. he just wants to escape he was just trying to get and totally i was trying to hold him on the ground when you and that, roll with somebody you're both fighting for a ground position yeah if someone really just wants to get away and they just burst out and you haven't trained for that to hold them, right so i ended up like i quickly understood what he was doing but i was spending all my energy and time trying to keep him on the ground and yeah. actually I could keep him on the ground. That that wasn't a problem. I don't think he ever got up of his own accord. But we got stood up in all uh, in every round of yeah. that fight. We got that's, stood back. That's up. BS. And that's BS. It's like, bro, you're. He's like, work, work. I'm like, I'm trying to hold the dude I'm on the working. ground. Yeah. It's like if I even move, he's standing up. So I'm working yeah. slow. And as I'd be working slowly, the ref would be like, stand up. And I'm like, fucker. You know. That's, that's one of the major problems I have with competition. Is it's yeah. Not, it's well, not if I if, it's a competition now. It's not a fight. Even if they had just left the fight on the ground, I would have been okay. It's like, yeah. man, you, you guys keep standing me up. I'm a ground fighter. It's like I almost felt like they were. Ca- it's like they're catering to the. They're catering to the striker, powerful right? Striker because it looks better. Yeah, and uh, yeah, if I could go back, I would. I would have trained some striking for that. I, I did. I had. I didn't. See, you, I trained no striking. Go back in time. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, Mike, I wouldn't waste it on that. I'd rather get my ass kicked. But I, I want to go by. I want knowledge, man. That's what. I, yeah. That's more important. But uh, but yeah, if I had multiple freebies to go back in time, I definitely. After that, I did train striking. Did you? I'm not a I'm not a phenomenal striker. All you but, all you have to be able to do is close the distance. Yeah, I can. Man, I might like I might even light you up. Like like yeah, I got yeah. I got my I got some striking after that. Like I I. Sure. What I, what I trained with then, uh, right after that fight, I was pissed, man. I was like, man, because I, I just never thought someone wouldn't engage me on the ground. Yeah. I'm like, crap. And I realized that you got to be able to bang standing up. If you want, if you want to fight MMA, it's, it's a yeah. sport. It's not, it's not a fight. It's yeah, not, right. It has rounds. They'll stand you up. Um, it, the, most of the rules cater. Even, even when I was standing up, they took away some of my tools. I, I couldn't do linear kicks, which is huge in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. That's the Gracie Stomp. So, um, yeah, after that, I started training with some, um, some karate, some karate guys and they right. used, they used like freestyle, freestyle kickboxing. So yeah. you could do anything. They were yeah. boxing kicks to the inside, outside legs. You could teeps, you know, back spinning back this, whatever. Cool. And us every day for almost every day, um, we, we trained for an hour and, uh, for about six months. Yeah. yeah. And I got to a point where. I felt that they didn't have an advantage on me. Like, it, I yeah. felt even. And I was like, these guys had been training like 10 years, even 12 years. Even if they're years. a better striker, you could, you could defend yourself. Yeah, I felt, distance. yeah. Like, I, I knew what to do. I knew how to move. I knew how to circle. I knew how to pivot. You know, I knew how to I knew how to throw my combos. I knew. And I was like, okay. Like, like I feel like I achieved like a blue belt level of striking. And, okay. and yeah, at least I, I, at least I had a game plan from that point on. Um. Let's see. Have you? Oh yeah. Have you ever been in any street fights? Um, yeah, few. Yeah. What? Let's. Uh, what about? What's your most brutal? 
Uh, let's see, how old was I? 14? And it was in gym class, and it was at, at gym was over, but it's 15 minutes left to the to the period, quarter, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it was just shoot hoops, play basketball. You know, we didn't have cell phones back then, so if, if we did, there'd be a bunch of kids in bleachers on their cell phones. But it was just the app. Gym class is over, but you can't go to your next class yet, so we are just shooting hoops. And this kid kept over and over. He kept coming up behind me and trying to smack the ball out. And I was just shooting hoops. I just wanted to shoot hoops. Yeah. Didn't want to be bothered. The second time he came up and was messing with me, the gym teacher walked right over and said, Get, leave him alone, da 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 she, you know, she gave him hell. And third time he came back and he and he was trying to knock the ball. I was doing one of these and he was trying to knock the ball out of me. And, and he got my glasses. I used to wear glasses from the third grade on. And he, I don't know, something snapped. Something just, ugh. So I just grabbed his shoulder here, grabbed the back of his head here, and just gave him a little hip. Yeah. Mm. Dislocated his ball and socket joint and broke his hip bone. Oh, shit. Yeah. So it's on the basketball court. Yeah. And that's when I realized how fragile, you know, I'd learned about him, been learning hip tosses for three or four years by then. Yeah. But I'd never really hip tossed somebody. Yeah. In class, you just do it, you know. But yeah, yeah, it was not good. The only thing that saved us, saved my family from a huge lawsuit was the gym, gym teacher backed my side of the story. Mm. Yeah, he was out of, out of school for the rest of the year. Man, I got in a fight. There was this dude, and ironically, his name, his name really was Joey Belushi, <laughs> which is a famous actor. This might have been a little bit before you. I don't know. But uh, this dude used to, every time he saw me, he started a fight with me. The, yeah. dude, the dude just fucking, he hated me. <laughs> yeah. And I never did anything to him. Yeah. But looking back at myself, I would hate my old self. Yeah. I, I was... I didn't know it. I like I had no clue. Like I, I yeah. thought I was normal, but looking back, I can see I was the most arrogant piece of shit, right? And I probably yeah. have a degree of that because you know we. I don't. It's not intentional, but you know you just. We are who we are. You know, there's, yeah. there's like this. Um, but I never did anything to this guy. The guy hated me. I fought him every time I saw him. He started a fight with me, and there was no there was no evading it. The guy was gonna fight me every time he saw me. He yeah. just wanted to beat me up. He just hated me. And I went in the Air Force, and I came back, and I'm like, man, years have gone by. I hadn't seen the guy. I'm like a man now. You know, he was older than me. He was always two or three years older than me, which was um, – and he was a wrestler, and I hadn't trained any – I'd done no grappling or anything. And we got in a fight. He sees me at this event in Louisville, and he's like, man, he goes – you know, he starts the fight again. I said, like, let's do this. Let's finish this, man. Let's fucking – we're going to do this. And uh, me, he's with his friends. I'm with mine. We go back to this parking lot. And, um we go at it, and the dude instantly takes me down because he's a wrestler. Yeah. So he shoots on me, and he's he's muscular, and I'm skinny and tall, and he's on top of me. And I just, I was tired of him beating me up. I knew, he was, you know, it was like the dude. He was he's bigger than me, stronger than me, he's older than me, and he can out wrestle me. And he's instantly on top of me, and I just, I stuck my fingers in his eyeballs. I just went ah, just like that, and like so hard and so fast that as soon as I hit his eyeballs, I was on top of him, right? Like I'm. Yeah. And I just – and I stuck them till they wouldn't go further. Like I felt them curve and like hitting the bones, right? So I had my fingers wrapped around his eyeballs. Like he knew not to push my hands. Like he knew not to grab my – because he knew it was like his eyeballs were going to come out with, with my hands or with my hand. So I talked to him. I like I like had my fingers like wrapped like this. By, and, I, and I sat there and said, have you ever messed – I you know, think I used the F-bomb. I was like, have you ever fuck with me again? I'll rip your fucking eyeballs out. Do you understand? And he was like, yes, yes, I understand. I was like, don't ever mess with me again. So I ended up, I ended up pulling my fingers out of, out of the sockets, and we got up, and he never messed with me again. That was it. Yeah, I had a somewhat similar experience. I was playing a pickup football game at uh, Westside Elementary. I was in high school. We just used to use the front yard to play pickup games in a friend of mine's neighborhood. And... Uh, we were on offense. I think it was only like five on five or six on six. It wasn't. We were just playing football. And this senior he was way bigger than me. And I had I can't remember if I hand off or caught the ball or whatever. I was just running down the field, and he was coming at me, you know. And I tried to juke a little bit. Instead of trying to tackle me, he just clotheslined me. I mean, just took his arm right across my face, chipped my tooth. Oh. Yeah. So I was pretty pissed, you know, doing that half crying, half pissed off. <laughs> And I'm trying to think of something to do. This guy's huge. I mean, he's got 50 pounds on me, easy. 
So the next play, I lined up right in front of him. And he, and he, they snapped the football, and he went to come at me, and I stuck my fingers right up his nose and just walked backwards as fast as I could. <laughs> I dragged him a good eight or ten feet and let him go and then ran away a little bit just in yeah. case he got up. Right. He didn't get up for a few minutes. I mean, he was just gushing blood. He never even looked to be sideways again. He graduated that following year, but he never messed with me again that whole year. Man, there was this dude. I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna drop his name on the on the Uh-oh. probably safe that he'd never hear about this. But even if he does, it, it happened, you know. But I'm sure one of my high school buddies will will remember this. There was this there was this dude that met was I can't remember why he didn't like me. He was a football player, and his name was Carnell Whalen. I'll never forget. But Carnell. Uh, I'm walking in the hallway, and this dude, he's walking right at me, and he, he bumps my shoulder. And when I, I, I saw he was going to bump my shoulder. I knew it was going to happen. I, I saw it, and, and so when he bumped mine, I kind of I hit him back. And he was – most people wouldn't do that. If you were me and you saw him, <laughs> yeah. you'd be like, nah, just let yeah. him bump your shoulder, right? Like he, he, was a, he was an intimidating dude, kind of like a thug, you know, from the kind of projects. And um, – Kind of projects. He kind of he turned around. I turned around. Yeah, well, from the projects, right? Yeah. He lived in a in a sh- shady ass area of town. Yeah. Uh, so he turned around and he's like, "Bump my shoulder again." But he did it to me. I didn't do it to him. Yeah. He intentionally. And I was like, "Man, if you bump my shoulder, I'm going to bump your shoulder back." I'm not back. My one thing I learned: my brother never let me back down. He taught me, yeah. "If you back down, you're going to be bullied." And I've I've never been bullied because I never backed down. So he went to hit my shoulder again. And I, I hit his shoulder back again. I was like. And this dude, he had his football jacket on. So we, he's like, he, he starts taking off his jacket. I said, dude, don't take off your jacket. He starts taking off his jacket. I said, dude, don't take off your jacket. So when he, when he pulled the jacket off, he was going to pull it off like this. There's a point in time, and I was like, right when he got to here, taking <laughs> off the jacket, I grabbed him around his arms, and I picked him up, and I, we were right, just to our left was a doorway to a classroom. And just inside the doorway... There's those, you know, I don't know how class chairs are today, but it used to be a wooden desk and wooden seat. And, you know, it's like, and, you know, instantly when I picked him up, I looked over in that doorway and I saw the, the top of that wooden seat, right? The, the back of the chair. And I picked him up and I just slammed his lower back on that just as hard as I could. Yeah. Like with everything I had, I just dropped it on it. And I saw... I saw the life leave his face, yeah. like his face just went, you know, because I'm like looking at him in the face and all the fight went out of him instantly, like just like, but then I took it a step further. I was in complete rage. I was like, I was seeing nothing but like death and I just grabbed his head and started smacking it in the table. So I'm like kind of over him and I just kept, just kept beating in the table until people pulled me off of him, right? Yeah. And uh I just remember going back to school. We both got suspended for two weeks, and I go back to school, and this dude would beat my ass in a fair fight. That was not a fair fight. Like, but I did show him that I was a very violent person. If you if you push me, yeah, right? Like, what's, if what's a fair fight though? There's no such thing as a fair fight, right? Like, basically, no what, what what he learned is that I'm gonna I'm gonna fight by all means necessary, yeah. right? So, sure enough, I'm man, I come back to school and I'm walking with one of my buddies and there he is leaning up against the lockers on the other side. And I'm like, and his buddy was ragging him out. He's like, oh, there's that white dude that beat your ass, Carnell. That dude beat your ass. You got to take that. And I'm like, in my head, I'm just like, dude, please don't. Right. Not I'm again. like, don't, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, he's not he taking his jacket off now. Expect, yeah. Right. Yeah. But he didn't do anything. I kept walking and I was like, oh, shit. Want that, oh, fuck. Made it past. No one ever messed with me again in high school. It was good. Life was good. But, um, and then in the Philippines, I knocked this dude out with a gun, man. This dude, I had no idea. I, I know you've heard this story, but dude was sitting there blowing kisses at my girl. And man, he flipped the tail. Man, I just, I ran over and he went to stab me with a chair. Long story. I, I, I just, I dropped him, man. I just cracked him and his eyes split open. I knocked him out instantly. He was folded in half. And, yeah. and there's the gun sticking out of his, and I was like, shit, man. Is intimidating, right? Like in a third world country and some gangbanger, right? Like apparently the the dude sitting there, the 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 guy that there's security at the place we're at, and I'm like, yeah. dude, take his gun. And she's like, Oh, he can't take his gun. I'm like, why not? She's like, Well, he's a gangbanger and he doesn't uh, want to he'll he'll, he'll 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 pay for it, right? Like this dude'll get wow. beat up or something. And I'm like, Oh shit, we gotta get out of here. 
if I could go back in time, though, I would have taken his gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And changed that. Um, what about you, Nikki? You ever been in a fight? Not really. No? I'm pretty, like, to myself. Like, if someone says something, I'm, like, the bigger person. I don't really care. Yeah. You know? That's I good. I mean, if someone really pushes my buttons, like, it, it'll take a lot. I'm a very tolerant person at times. That's how I am now. You know, I'm I'm pretty tolerant at times because I know a lot of people are really stupid. So I just <laughs> I think of myself just you know what? All right, I'll just be the bigger person. I don't care. Yeah. You talk your crap. Go ahead. It's not gonna do anything. Like honestly. That's good. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm I've I was always taught if they put your hands on you, that's when you that's when you fight. But if they don't, then it's it's all good. Just go about your life. Because why why would you want to stress yourself out like on pretty much nothing i mean they're nobody if they're trying to like hurt you you know what i'm saying yeah i don't really care they're irrelevant to my life so it's okay um st- sticking with last few questions of bjj and mma um leg locks are you a fan yes or no you like the leg lock system yeah i don't i haven't had any problem with it you like oh. training with them yeah, yeah, it's good to learn how to defend against them. I've got my leg lock defense is definitely, definitely better than ever. Of course, I never did leg locks before yeah. I did jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we we you know, we're at a table. We're all from the same school here. We're yeah. all from Checkmate, but uh, we we embrace everything, right? Like, there's nothing. Yeah. I don't think the only thing we don't do is slam. Like, we we're, yeah. we're heel hooks and toe folds and. You name it, we're at wrist locks, you know, it, it all goes here. Anything we can figure out, catch wrestling, you name it. For sure. Um, outside of the school, outside of anyone in the school, including me, who would you say your most influential BJJ practitioner is? Like if you if you oh. try to mimic anyone's style out there? Or, or maybe... I don't really know anyone's style. What do you, do you, do you try to learn from anyone else? Like, like... I mean, out, like outside of my lineage, like like don't if I, if I had to say outside of my lineage, outside of the people that I've trained with in, in person, I think the most influential for me is would be Hita and Henner. Like I mean, they're yeah. one and the same. They're basically Siamese people, right? But yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, it would be those two, right? Like like yeah. when when the degree of dissecting yeah. that they put into, you know, like there's no, there is no room for question about the thought and for breakdown sure. they put into the move they're t- discussing, you know, yeah. whereas other people, you know, they'll talk about something and they'll, you know, they'll, oh, this goes here and you do this and you do that. And, you know, but, but they're sitting there talking about, nice. you know, your pinky needs to be this much bent and, <laughs> Hold your mouth right. Yeah, and your tongue should be hanging out the right side, and you want your uh, you want your say, thirty-five percent butt clinch, you know, <laughs> on, the <left laughs> what, left on the left cheek. Um, I guess I would. I've only I've only been to jiu-jitsu for a short amount of time, but I guess I probably watch more Roy Dean videos than anybody. I'm a Roy Dean fan, yeah. A bit of him yeah, lately. and I like because he has an Aikido background, yeah. so it's a very smooth flow. And you see that, like in my opinion, that's a benefit to his jiu-jitsu. It's why his jiu-jitsu is super smooth. Like yeah. I think that that's like that's a huge benefit. This this is why all martial arts help. The, they're all they're synergistic. They're all one thing. They're yeah. just different ways to accomplish that. And 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 they're synergistic in that yes. one makes the other more powerful. When you when you have oh, one, yeah, like sure. like if you can strike and. No wrist locks, and then learn jujitsu. You're, you're number one. You're gonna learn jujitsu a lot faster. Yeah. If you do, if you've done anything, even if you just took dance classes or yoga, you're. I like how it looked at me. <laughs> yoga. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you're, you're learning how to use your body more efficiently. <clears throat> yeah. And if you're learning that from two different places at once, then you're gonna excel at both of those things you're doing. Yeah. You know. They're, they're, it's all the same thing. You're learning how to be more efficient with what you have. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I've, I've wanted to do, and I've reached out, it's not for lack of trying, uh, is I've, I've always wanted to get more instructors in here, like of, of different arts. Yeah. I've always I wanted to have a Muay Thai instructor. I wanted to have a wrestling coach. I've wanted to have a, 
um, but just haven't find it, found anyone to fill those roles, you know. We've, but uh, I do think, I believe that they are synergistic, uh, absolutely. Uh, and I think yoga is huge. Like, I'm so sold on that flexibility. And it's not just a yeah. flexibility. It's almost like a, it's like a, a strength, too. You it's know, just, like, yoga is not just about flexibility. It's isometric endurance. Yeah. The ability to hold a position. For, yeah. That's a good, I never heard that term, but I yeah, agree with you. Yeah, isometric, isometric endurance. endurance. Yeah. yeah. Isolating a muscle group and, and holding it for enduring yeah. for a length of time. Yeah, absolutely. No, it makes perfect sense when you said it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's just like resistance band training. If you do resistance band training and you just go for quantity, you're going to develop fast twitch. Yeah. If you do resistance band training and you grab and hold a position till your mm. muscles are shaking, you're building slow I, twitch isometric endurance. I wish we could offer – two things I would want to offer in here. <clears throat> There's actually three things I'd like to offer. I'd like to offer aerial silk, yeah. which we have yeah, really We have fun. the kits. I really want that. I just I really need to rent a lift. Yeah, that would be fun. The problem is renting a lift. I got to rent a lift yeah. to get them attached to the beams, oh, and I haven't okay. rented the lift yet, right? Mm -hmm. So, silk. yeah, we've we've. Just don't it's let so pretty Brendan, too when they do it. Just like, don't let Brendan video me. I'm doing it. Oh. <laughs> no, you build a lot of muscle doing like oh, aerial sure. silks. You see people on like America's Got Talent and stuff, and they're like doing all these flips and doing all these and muscles, not and it's building like, just the muscles that, that, you, that, you, that you build. If you go and just work out that group of muscles, mm -hmm. you're you're. It's Building muscles, body. it's a total body workout. Yeah. Just like swimming yeah. or jujitsu yeah. or almost any martial art, for the most part, is a total body yeah. workout. Yeah, yeah. I want to get I want to get the aerial silks going on, and uh, I would want to get yoga going for adults. For sure. Like I, I think that I I'm think trying to definitely. see if I can get a license in yoga. Get a license because yeah. we're I'm be awesome to come here and do yoga instead of having to go to another gym or studio. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think the adults would jump in on it. And the oh, other I thing... I guarantee I would. I, I, would, I, I would upgrade my membership and I know my wife would come do it. Yeah. Yeah, I want to... I, I, that's a goal of mine this year. Maybe maybe by the end of the year it's maybe to... If not 2019, yeah, do yoga in here. Or one, one night a week. Yeah. Yeah. And because uh, even like remember George took yoga, there's a lot of people yeah. that took it. George, George yeah. yeah, George would go do yoga as well. George. And Jason, oh, Jason's yeah. wife does Jason yoga. And and wife. Oh, no, I think Jason does it too. Does it. Um, Jason does well, it. Well, I never. I don't think he I probably doesn't do as much as her. But. Yeah, yeah, but I know he has. He's talked about it, and and I would definitely do it because it's. I know I know how beneficial it is for your skeleton. Like I know that's sure. huge. It always feels really good when you're just stretching. It's kind of spiritual. Very much. Yeah. It, you, you it's know. a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. is what it yeah. is. Uh, so, I've ran through all the questions, but let's uh, let's spend the normally we we do normally we put down and we have put down three hours and seven. We took like a ten minute break, ten or fifteen. So we put down about three hours. But before we before we close out, um, I'm gonna ask if if you guys. Are woke on any other topics that I haven't touched on? Is there any? Is there any other? Uh... Well, I think as we all know in here, I'm not really that woke. I just, you know, I kind of listen to you guys, and then if I hear something that I recognize, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I kind of know about that, but not really. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I'll bring some up that you may, you may. I'll just kind of touch on a few, but if you think of something, jump in. But I'll, I'll kind of throw these out there because I love. Um, I'm just addicted to looking at like, mm -hmm. you know esoteric knowledge you know just like knowledge that's old and forgotten or hidden right yeah. and um did you know that uh water has memory did you know that there's been a, a japanese study and a german study uh a german scientist and a japanese and these are both like famous studies you can if you look these up um what they found is that if you play like rock to water right uh, and you and you look at it. It has a very. If you look at it in a microscope. It's. You can actually see. Uh, it has structure inside the water. It's hard to explain. I mean, I mean, you can. I can send you videos about it. Mm -hmm. But it'll be very random and distorted. Yeah. But then if you play like Beethoven or Bach or something, right? The structure inside the water will basically look like, like uh, snowflakes. It'll be very structured. It'll be very. 
and they have observed this unquestionably, that that water will retain for long periods of time um, that memory of that, of that at least mm. sound, they, 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 when they play sound to it, right? Um, and see, I, like, I, I kind of have a belief system like, like, I call that frequency. For me, everything's like, like, frequency. well, frequency means many different things. Let's talk a little water. I gotta <laughs> but, some water. But frequencies affect us more than, I think, like more than anything today, right? Like, like. In, in one sense of the word frequency, the city has a frequency. Yeah. Like you go in the city and there's this hustle and bustle and this constant like, you know, waiting to get here and your just frustration. And then you go out in the country and it's just like, oh, yeah, you, now you can just drive. There's no one in front of you. There's happier. no cars yeah, around. You feel better. Well, and that's also, but, but there's a frequency, even though you can't, it's not even your choice. You can't be that person that you can be in the in the country, in the city, because of all these other frequencies around you. The guy in the yeah. car next to you, he's, you know, it's like you feel this, it's, it's, you're being bombarded with it. But another thing is actual frequencies. Um, we, uh, we're bombarded with cellular frequencies. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're bombarded with EMFs. What cellular is an EMF, it's an electromagnetic frequency, but mm -hmm. we're bombarded with Wi-Fi signals. We're bombarded with Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. We're bombarded with, and all that is interfering with the one frequency we've had throughout our, uh, you know, throughout humanity's existence, which is the Schumann resonance, 7.83 roughly hertz. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the frequency that bounces between the Earth and the ionosphere. And um, that's the frequent, that's the mammalian frequency, right? Like that gestation and all this stuff kind of mm -hmm. sinks to that. And what they found, there's a, there's a, a, a really good documentary, which this, I would put this at the top of the list if you haven't seen it. I'm always recommending it. And it's called Resonance, Beings of Frequency. Resonance. Oh, I think the name of the documentary is called Resonance. And if you watch that, you will instantly, it'll change you. You'll be... Number one, you will not want to live within a mile of a cell tower. If you can look out your door and see a cell tower, yeah. you are being bombarded with these cellular frequencies. And what they found, if you watch this documentary, you'll see that people that live around cell towers have much higher anxiety, higher anxiety and a higher cancer rate, both. Uh -huh. a, a much, mm -hmm. unquestionably, there's a tie to it, cancer and anxiety. Can these power lines. Right? Like, so... My goal is to move out of the frequency of the city, you know, that, that, that angry, you know, yeah. hustle and bustle, but also out of the frequency of being bombarded. Now, the, the, one, the one nice thing, I am kind of lucky. If you look out my door, if you just walk out and look right, there's a cell tower, like 200, yeah. 300 feet, massive cell tower, right? I live in a steel building. And I mean, it's actually- yeah, an airport the, with radar. Yeah, the whole thing is steel. And we don't get any signal in here. Mm, yeah. um, it, your signal's actually shit. I can't get Wi-Fi or any. I can't get cell phone. Doesn't work in some in most areas. So I know it cuts down at least ninety percent. I'm lucky from that okay. standpoint because I just became aware of all this frequency stuff recently. And um, I guess I'm kind of lucky that I'm living in a steel building because it acts as a Faraday cage. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> Faraday cages block. EMF, they block, you know, they block frequencies. But uh, if you watch that documentary, you will be sold on on our sickness that would that an anxiety that we're experiencing today frequencies. is based on frequencies. You will you'll be sold on that, and they do lots of tests to verify that. And I don't want to be redundant to the last episode, so I'll just say go back and, and watch yeah. that documentary, Check it out. and it'll sh it'll show to you that frequencies are responsible for our mental state and our physical state. But then another thing you see is that f frequencies and memories are transferred from one substance to another, right? So like, for example, I, I think that's part of the reason, like I've never really analyzed why I quit eating meat, but I did quit, quit eating meat. And I think that there's just a degree of torture that I disagree with. Like, I, like the way that animals are treated their whole lives and up into the ending, I can't justify that, right? Like, like maybe if I hunted for an animal, and yeah. but 
I've seen how we how some of this meat is like they put them in a big steel vice and like it, it would be the most horrific experience if this were done to a yeah. human it would be unbelievable you know like like don't get me wrong if you're gonna eat me and I'm running through the woods and you spear me in the, in the lung or something I'd be like okay I, I can handle that yeah. you know what I'm saying I'm like oh, it's gonna suck I'm gonna bleed out it's gonna be painful but it would be horrendous to think you're going to put me in a vice and fillet me alive, yeah. you know, and that's what we do to animals. We do this and I can't, I can't support that. Right. Because that's a sentient being. I've watched fish create works of art for their mates. You know, I've watched ducks feed fish. I've watched, and I, I, I guess all that is I, I can't justify putting a, a, a sentient creature through a horrendous experience, like something that I can't fathom, something that I couldn't, ha- you know, I'd, yeah. I'd assume, I'd imagine I can't handle that. Like if that, that's unnecessary, right? Uh, anyone who cooks a fish alive, you know, and like, have you seen that? You've seen people in yeah. Japan, they're like eating fish while they're still alive. Yeah. They like, oh man, that's messed up. I couldn't. So yeah, whenever if, we catch fish, we make sure like before we fillet them, we if they're still wiggling around, we kind of get a hammer and just wow. beat their head so they're not alive. Because that's, it's like awful. What? I was going to do a restroom break. That's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Oops. Yeah, we're all. Cool. Yep. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we try to make sure. Because it's, I mean, some of it is nerves for the fish, but, you know, we kind of, we just beat their head down. Yeah, but imagine, like, what off. if, what if animals, what if fish have feelings? Like, what if they, like, they like do. I, I think they do. Right. Yeah, they do. They're, right. They're they have, you know. All animals have some feeling. I don't. I've I seen don't one crab. Say, I've know? seen a crab hug another crab and not want to let that crab go. You know, like one. Have you seen that one? Have you seen that video where the crab no. hugs the other crab? You haven't mm-hmm. seen that. It was clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it certainly looks like it was protecting that other crab and, and like holding on to it. Like maybe it was its spouse or something like that. You see, um, humpback whales. It, to save them from like you know great whites or like or a pot of orca whales. They'll let the seals on their um, their fins and let them hitch a ride until the whales or the sharks are gone. So I believe I believe the animals definitely have um, yeah. feelings and, and, and they try and look out for each other. Some of them and they'll even look out for us. But what do we yeah. what do we do? We do, we club them right and kill them and eat them and yeah. Um, I don't I don't support the way. Um, so I'm just like I, I think that's an evolution, right? Process. Like if you have the option to eat. If you have the option, I mean, I, I just analyze this and I'm not, look, I know people are going to disagree with me and I, and I have friends that hunt and I, I'm okay with that. Like, I mean. I just feel like we have so many other food sources. Why do we have to rely on, you know, just all the animals? Like, you know how people are really like over exaggerating what they eat, like meats and stuff. Like, just keep it basic. You don't yeah, have well, to eat every single animal, you know? Exactly. That, that's that was my mentality for becoming uh, for becoming vegan. yeah I wouldn't say vegan I'd vegan. say vegetarian I'm working on becoming vegan like it's a, it's a work in progress mm-hmm. but like I can't justify killing a sentient animal when there's options to not do that like we would be pissed off if aliens just started eating us alive like we would be you know that'd be some pretty messed up shit like bro you, there's nothing else you could eat like you can't eat some lettuce or some shit right, yeah, right. and they're like no we could but you taste better. Well, I don't think the taste better is, is like, that's not j- justification, you know, for me, you know? Yeah. So. They even say, um, if you're eating meat, like, especially red meat, it's actually bad for you. Like, you keep eating it. That's actually what causes a lot of um, sicknesses and for diseases sure. for a lot of people is just eating meat. And they say, like, people who switch to, like, um, like healthier diets, like vegetarian or like vegan, yeah, plant-based, they're actually... Their mentality is not only better, but they're actually healthier. As yeah. Person. Well, I think that you're, you're, I know this is going to sound kind of crazy, but you're kind of ingesting those bad frequencies. Like that horrendous experience is arguably in the memory of that meat. And then you're, yeah. you're consuming those memories. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. when, the more tripped out shit I see with science and shit we can't explain and like water having a memory and frequencies making us sick it's an invisible thing that you know and here we are it's giving us cancer and anxiety right it's interfering with our brain frequencies right um i just think that it's all related deeper than we can than we even know yet and i'd rather be safe than sorry right like 
I don't know. I, I don't. I, I just have a hard time imagining like lettuce having a horrendous experience. You know, <laughs> like yeah. I would be. That would ruin my whole life if lettuce were like. If one day someone finds out and lettuce is like, no, down, screaming. oh my God, we're just yeah. chopping the shit, you know, yeah. then I'd be, yeah. then I'd just have to starve to death. I don't know. But as long as I have options to eat something, like I've, I've heard we're on the verge of growing meat. Like I've just, heard just, that. Yeah. Just meat. Like I saw where that's going to happen, where we're not going to. Growing protein. There's also yeah. a, um, I forget what the fruit is called, but there's a fruit um, that people grow and it tastes just like meat. Just take all the the inside of it and just cook it like you would meat, huh. and they put it in like their burgers and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I forget what the fruit is called, but it's a fruit that tastes like meat, which is weird. But I would eat it, hmm. you know, because I I don't I don't support the way they like treat animals. I know not, cause like you know Diamond D Ranch here in Jacksonville, they have um, a, they use cows. They they're the ones that like they hold the cows until they're yeah. ready to go. To the slaughterhouse, but they they live really good lives yeah. on that farm. They they're just it's out there eating, doing whatever they want, you know, in the field. But I mean, there's also other places that don't treat them how yes, they should course. be, and those are the places I really disagree with. So, I mean, I don't eat too much red meat. The mo the main meat that I really eat is chicken, but I mean, yeah. I mean, I usually eat it in smaller portions anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine like? I think one of the worst things that could happen to you is, of all the ways you could go out, God, just having your throat slit, right? Like, imagine some machine. Oh, like what they do with, like, the pigs and the chickens. Oh, that's what they do. Imagine that's how they, that's what they do. do. Cows. Yeah, yeah, cows, too. They put them in a machine, and it lifts up their neck, and then they yeah. slice well, them. What else they do uh, um, first, with cows and um, milk? For the mom cows, like, as soon as they give birth to their babies, they don't even get to, like, touch them. They separate them, separate and then they go and kill the babies, and then they just take the moms and take all the milk the, from them. They let the um, calf get to probably four to six weeks, and then slaughter really? it. Really? Because yeah, they slaughter it for veal, and then immediately. Oh, the, yeah. Well, I just I saw a video. This mom cow just gave birth to this baby, yeah. and they just separated them, and they just threw the baby cow, and I was like, oh my god! Like it made me. Man, that changes. And they had chicks too, baby chicks, and they're mm. just throwing them yeah. in the meat slicer. Grinder, like, oh. yeah, just grinding yeah, them up. There's a, yeah, there's a it was disconnect. So sad. I mean, I I remember growing up on our neighbor had a farm when we grew up, and you know he would slaughter like two cows a year out of all of his cows. Mm. He would just slaughter the, but it, there was not as much of a disconnect. Mm. It was just him and his wife and the cow. You know, there was no mass farming going on yeah. and probably had some type of emotional tie to that cow and probably oh, tried sure. to kill it in the most humane manner he possibly yeah. could yeah. you know that would be okay i mean that would be more tolerable yeah. right like if, if if that animal led a relatively good life oh, yeah. they were then, free range their entire and life and then you just you know put it out of its misery quick you know mm-hmm. without it knowing it's coming yeah, or something would, i think believe you would shoot him behind the ear with a rifle yeah <clears throat> um, all right. Well, we put down we put down three and a half hours, so I'm going to call it a wrap. Yep. So, Jeff, thanks for coming out. Yeah. Thanks for being a part of the podcast. Awesome. Um, Nikki, thanks as always. Of course. Next week, uh, I'm not sure. I got to look and see who we've got coming next week, but I think another black belt. All right. We're signing off. See everyone later. Oh, we got all the waves this time. We can all wave.